city politics. I ran. I ran for the commission. Glad I lost that one, too. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Site Plan Review and Appearance Board of Wednesday, July 27th. Uh, Rochelle, if you could call roll, please. Dana Post Adler is absent. Price Patton. Here. Carol Perez. Here. Annette Gray. Here. Stephen Cohen. Here. John Brewer. Here. Todd LaRue. Here. All right. Uh, first item on our agenda is approval of the agenda. Um, staff, do we have any agenda changes? No. Okay. Uh, board members, any agenda changes? No. All right. If I could get a motion to approve. To approve. Thank you, Annette. Second. Second. Thank you, John. Data Post Adler is absent. Price Patton. Yes. Carol Perez. Yes. Annette Gray. Yes. Stephen Cohen. Yes. John Brewer. Yes. Todd LaRue. Yes. All right, on our agenda is uh, meeting minutes from March 9th, 2022. Uh, I trust you've all had the opportunity to review those, see if there's any corrections or changes. I believe I was absent that meeting, so I don't have any comments. I'm good with it. Want to make a motion? Sure, I move to approve the minutes of March 9th, 2022. Second. Second. All right, thank you. Okay, Nina Post Adler is absent, Price Patton. Yes. Carl Perez. Yes. Annette Gray. Yes. Stephen Cohen. Yes. John Brewer. Yes. Todd LaRue. Yes. All right. Uh, next is swearing of the public. So if you are going to speak tonight on any item uh, or even in the public comments uh, or think there's a chance you might speak during those points, please rise and prepare to be sworn in. Invested in me as a notary of the state of Florida, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Please be seated. All right. At this point in the meeting, we accept comments from the general public on any item that is not on tonight's agenda. So if you'd like to speak of anything of relevance to the site plan review and appearance board on some item that is not on tonight's agenda, now would be the time to come forward. And seeing none, I will close that portion of the meeting and we will skip over seven, which is presentations, because I do not believe we have any. And we are in uh, eight quasi-judicial items, uh, 8A. And um, Mr. Carruthers, it looks like you're out. Chair, do you have the quasi-judicial rules up there? Oh, yes. Yep. Let me read the quasi-judicial rules before we get started. Uh, this hearing shall be conducted in accordance with the City of Delray Beach quasi-judicial rules. The applicant and the city will be each permitted to present their case. The public shall be allowed to speak for three minutes each or a maximum of six minutes if the person representing the organization or a group of people who are present but agree not to speak. Board members, staff, and the applicant may be allowed to cross-examine a witness. The city or applicant will be allowed to offer rebuttal testimony. The decision to approve or deny an application or appeal may not legally be made on personal views as to whether a project is a good project or not, nor may a decision be based on the number of citizens who support or oppose a particular project. The law requires that all decisions must be made on the basis of whether the project meets the requirements of law, the comprehensive plan, and the land development regulations. All right, Mr. Carruthers, if you'd like to introduce the item. Uh, hello and good evening. My name is Walt Tavius Crothers, Assistant Planner, City of Derry Beach. Um, this is item 8A, the Bed Bath & Beyond Plaza, located, located at 14802 South Military Trail. And the applicant is here, and this is her PowerPoint. Thank you. And board members, any ex parte communication on this item? No. 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 All right, thank you. All right, the floor is yours. If you could start off just by giving us your name and your address for the record and then uh, proceed with your presentation. Okay, yes. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Raquel Rodriguez. I'm the property manager for the Bed Bath & Beyond Plaza, and I'm here as the agent for the BB Plaza Associates Limited, which owns uh, the center. Um, 
uh, on our PowerPoint, the second slide uh, basically shows like a, a space plan uh, for the center. Uh, the painting, uh, if you notice, is like an L shape or something similar to it. Uh, it goes from uh, the address 14802 uh, to 14860, uh, meaning the north it uh, starts on the north side and ends on the, on the uh, south side. Um, it's uh, a mix of retail and restaurants. Uh, our anchor tenant is Bed Bath & Beyond store. Um, uh, we are in desperate need of painting, as you can see on the rest of the slides. Um, right now, uh, we're looking for uh, um, the colors are mostly on the uh, gray family. Um, uh, the columns will be the darker color. Uh, which will go on on the columns, and you'll see the renderings later on. Uh, then um, the walls are um, a Benjamin Moore uh, short line as the name of the color, which is a lighter one, and that will go on all the um, the actual walls and the facade. Uh, and then we have a, um, a very light um, silver uh, color. Um, which is called silver satin, which is the color that will go on the crown moldings and uh, back doors and, um, and on the ceiling when you're walking uh, on, the, um, on the center, at the center. Um, on the next uh, slide, you're gonna start seeing the, the actual uh, condition right now. Um, we have a lot of different colors depending on where you look, which elevation you're looking at. And they uh, range from tan to, uh, we even have one elevation has like a light uh, pink or a peach. So it looks dated. Um, uh, and that's why we feel that the gray family will bring up the center. Um, if you continue on, it will show you different uh, size areas. Uh, that will be the north side. Um, and then you'll see um, that's the center where the anchor tenant is. And then on the north side will be, I believe, the next. Um, and that is the back of the center. Um, the back of the center will be uh, painted just the main color of the walls, which is the short line or the lighter. Uh, color gray, uh, and then uh, the um, the moldings and the doors in the back will go with the same color as the crown moldings, the silver satin uh, gray. Um, if we go to the next slide, um, you'll see how different it looks. Um, uh, it looks more more dated. I don't know. It, it looks so much better. Um, that will be the north side. Uh, of the center, I think we also have a, um, that will be like the center to the right of the anchor tenon. And then I believe I have a, f a rendering of the back um, next, uh, which you don't see the door, but the door will be the same color as the, uh, as the, um, uh, the moldings on the, on the top. Um, on the next slide, um, Bed Bath & Beyond um, has done a, a, a rebranding. Uh, they used to be all black and white before, so they're going with a new trademark uh, color, which I think uh, is, is going to enhance the center. Um, uh, and that will be the, uh, the blue that will go on their section. Um, on the next slide, uh, it has what is now the, the facade, the existing look. And then the next one will show uh, what they're proposing, um, which complements very well with a great, uh, especially the shoreline, which will be on both sides. And, and, um, and uh, that, will, that will be their, their proposed uh, rendering. Um, and um, I think that will be our last short. Uh, I don't know if uh, anyone has any questions for me. Okay, thank you. And um, the city will do their presentation. We'll open it up for public comment, and then we'll come back to you with the opportunity to okay. have additional comments and questions. Okay, thank you again. Um, my name is, again, is Waltavius Crothers, Assistant Planner. This is item 8A, the Bed Bath & Beyond Plaza. Um, they're considering a color change for the Bed Bath & Beyond Plaza. 
uh, from the current shades of beige or tan um, on the existing walls, buildings, and columns in the ceilings uh, to a several shades of gray and silver and a storefront color change um, from a beige or tan trim to dark blue for the bed, bath, and beyond storefront. So uh, the Bed Bath & Beyond Plaza is located at 14802 South Military Trail um, in the commercial zoning. Uh, it's located in the Four Corners Overlay District. Um, to the north, we have Plant Commercial. Uh, to the south, Single Family Residential. Um, to the east and to the west, Plant Commercial as well. And it's currently uh, in commercial use. Um, some of the businesses within the plaza, we have Bed Bath & Beyond, as um, she stated is the anchor. Uh, we have Enterprise Car Rental, USPS, uh, Philly, Philly Grill, Jack's Pizzeria, Mario's Market, and Hacienda Restaurant and Bar. Uh, next, I'll go into the proposed colors, um, as she stated before. And if I could uh, pass around the color palette sample. Uh, again, these are shades of gray and silver. Uh, so you have the Benjamin Moore uh, Shoreline, Benjamin Moore Smoke Embers, and the Benjamin Moore Silver Satin. Uh, here we just have some before and after pictures. Um, on the left, the proposed rendering, and then on the right, the before, what is currently existing. Another before and after. Another board before and after, this will be the rear of the building. And then we have the storefront proposal. Again, um, going with the dark blue on the storefront. Um, again, as she stated, the rebranding. And they are removing all the tiles and replacing with EIFs, which is, EIF stands for Exterior Installation and Finish System. So kind of a, a building material that will go behind the, uh, the storefront with the letters. These modifications can be determined to be in conformity with good taste and good design. Here are the required findings for the board. And we have some options for the board actions as well. And this will just be my last slide, the current, um, the proposed renderings. Thank you, Mr. Carruthers. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak on this item? All right, seeing and hearing none, do you have any rebuttal testimony based on what the city's presented? No. Okay. That sounds Mr. Carruthers, anything else? No, sir. All right, to the board. And uh, Stephen, would you like to start? <laughs> uh, sure. A lot of gray. Channeling Dana. You can't really tell the difference between say those that. colors. <laughs> uh, but I, you know, I, I have nothing to, to add. It's, you know, seems fine. So, Chris. Yeah, my only question: the rendering on the right there. That's that's a new blue for the Bed Bath and Beyond, but the rendering doesn't reflect the grays. Though that's going to be painted in the grays, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. It's just that that's the rendering. Uh, Bed Bath & Beyond provided, and it was before. Yeah, I just wanted to double check. Yeah, Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Todd? I was going to say the same thing about Dana. Picked a <laughs> time not to have Dana. She's not a big fan of the graying of Delray Beach, I guess. Um, but when you tell people they have to use earth tones and beige has been used and kind of getting tired, I mean, we're, how many options do you have? Um, you know, I would love to see some more accents around there, not necessarily painting, but maybe plantings or something like that. I don't mind it so much when you've got, you know, greenery and things like that that may add some warmth to it. Um, it is a commercial plaza, but, um, yeah, I mean, everything, it's going to be an improvement for sure, so nothing else besides that. Annette? Actually, I think there's an opportunity to incorporate more of the blues around the building. Um, I'm at Tasso's Greek restaurant, sorry, at least once a week. <laughs> they have a nice blue awning. 
that goes out and it's a Greek theme. So has any thought been given to incorporating some of the blues maybe around the top, around the building? It's just a flat gray building. Um, not right now, but the Tassos um, awnings is very similar actually to right. the same blue. Right, um, that was my thought. Yeah, um, not at this time, but we, uh, there are some, I don't know if you look on the, uh, on the first rendering, there's like a little bit kind of a triangle tile. But that's only in front of the Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, no, no, I mean on the, uh, on the first rendering on the left. Oh, okay. Um, uh, we could do that in, in the same blue. Um, that would be my preference. If that, uh, I mean, I could send it in. I think so. that's an opportunity. Okay. We do have a, um, a lot of landscaping and green right across the entire mm -hmm. walkway. It's just that the way the photos were taken, you don't really see it. Um, but we do have a lot of uh, uh, hedge right in front of where Mario's and Med Bath and Beyond is. Uh, is it has Starbucks that color. Is I'm sorry. Starbucks is coming in there to block. Well, uh, actually, Starbucks, since it's a one story building, oh, okay. uh, it is not. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a lot. Uh, there's more visibility for us now than when we had the bank there. The bank building used to block right. quite a quite a bit of it, but now everyone is looking forward to to having Starbucks and the traffic that comes with it. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's a one story. It won't have an issue. I think that's my opportunity. My comment. Thank you, Carol. I don't have anything to add. I have to agree with uh, Annette. I think uh, we, if there was opportunity to add some of that blue in, um, you know, maybe you can see in the uh, the top left square that uh, you know there's a section of the facade that drops down. Maybe if you did any sections like that where it drops down, I guess also in the uh, bottom left square it drops down again. If you if you did like some of the panels with the blue at that top. Uh, molding area, it could be very striking and carry the theme throughout. Okay, you mean the the triangles that are part of the columns, yeah. mm -hmm. the little triangles? No, no, at the very top, the the molding at the top. Oh, you mean do the molding in in blue? Yeah, that would be an opportunity. But we you could also do the triangles in in blue. Then how, how many of those are throughout the plaza? Do you um, know the triangles? Quite a bit, especially not so much on the area where Bed Bath and Beyond it mm -hmm. is. But on the north and south side, there are at least about five on the left on the north side, and about seven or eight, I think, on the other side. I might be wrong on the count, but there's quite a bit. But they're on the lower um, mm. elevation, where the columns are a lot shorter, if you notice, right. that, that on the center. So, um, so that would bring that blue throughout the plaza without really competing with the bed and bath and beyond, so that would sort of establish that... Um, Blue is tied in there, but it's not dominant except for a Bed Bath and Beyond. Right. So I, I think yes, the the triangles on the bottom part will be a better. Um, if we do it on the crown molding, it would just be, I think, too much. Um, yeah, I, I can see that. Um, yeah. Do you think other board member comments on that? No, I agree. It's definitely monochromatic. It's just yeah. There, I would love. Just add a little pop do. if we put yeah, that little bit can. of extra yeah, blue in some spots. What to do, but definitely if there was some, then the had a little more interest. Um, I hate to tell them how to do their job, but I just, I, I, you know, it definitely seems very monochromatic. And since they volunteered the blue in the triangles, it seems like that would be a reasonable approach. Okay with that. Even price, any? Yeah, as long as we don't have to um, make them come back. Yeah, I mean, I prefer not to have to have them come back. Yes, I will appreciate that, too. So, um, Mr. Bennett, what do we need to do to make sure we get that uh, motion made properly? Uh, obviously, we want to affirm their consent. Um, they, You have to go back and just confirm with your management that that'll be acceptable. But if we approve it that way and it's acceptable to them, then you can move forward. I can if move you forward. If you find it, you come back to us. So Is there, can we clarify what we're referring to when we say the triangles? Mr. Uh, Brothers, okay. can you put your mouse cursor or something right over? Are you referring to this 
section. I can't really see it. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's hard to see because it's, it's too gray. Do you have a slide <laughs> so with gray. a single photograph on it? Is that a better slide? No, that's, it's not there, so you have to go. Is that one? I mean, actually, Okay. Right. Oh, it's a square. <laughs> it's like, oh, where well, are the geez. triangles? Thank you. Oh, this, these squares right here? That's, that's oh, like, where those are the blocks triangles? at the bottom of the, yeah. the columns okay. where it's okay. extends. Uh, now I'm on board. I was trying, I was desperately trying I know. to find a triangle. I know. I see any triangles. It's hard to see it from on. here, but yeah, they, they are they are squares. Sorry about that. So I would, I would recommend reading um, the motion A that's in the staff report, approving what's been submitted. And then adding language at the end, it just says authorizing staff to um, accept a color change for the decorative squares on the columns to the, and I don't know the official name of the blue that, that you're referring to, but I think the staff report just says dark blue color, or the motion does. Annette, you want to make that motion? Aye, aye, aye. All right, so when you got it captured, let me know. And, <laughs> and just uh, to confirm, I don't know if Amy's back there, but... I always like to confirm with staff whether that's clear enough and they're comfortable if the board gives that type of authority. Yeah, it, it all seems clear. Just use number B, number B. <laughs> Item B. B as amended. As amended. Yeah. Yeah. Bath and Beyond Blue. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to find it. Okay, so we're doing B, yes? Yep. Okay. I move approval as amended of the color changes, color change for the Bed Bath and Beyond Plaza, change the existing building walls, columns, ceilings, and crowns from shades of beige to, or tan to several shades of gray and silver for the majority of the plaza, and from being from beige or tan to dark blue color for the Bed Bath and Beyond storefront. By finding that the request, and I put the amendment first. Now you can go ahead and okay. finish. By finding that the request is consistent with the land development regulations and the comprehensive plan, and modify color change for the decorative squares from the gray colors to the dark blue bed, bath, and beyond colors. Do we need to say something like a decorative um, um, column base squares or something like that so we clarify? Decorative this. squares on the columns. Yeah. I'm sorry, I wasn't writing verbatim, but did you reference the columns? Mm -hmm. I think that should be sufficient based upon the record and staff that's present. Okay. All right, Rochelle, did you capture that? Almost. <laughs> <laughs> and modify color change for the decorative squares on the columns from gray recommended gray color palette to the dark blue colors of the bed bath and beyond gray color palette the blue dark blue of bed bath and beyond storefront okay. all right can i get a second uh well let's just confirm you do agree with that as we've correct yes okay thank you I'll second for discussion. All right, Price. Just real briefly, I'm, I'm going to vote no because I don't think we should be designing stuff from the from the day as I was perfectly fine with the with the gray. So, okay, just for the record. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? All right, if you'd like to call roll. So was that a second? That was a second. It was seconded. I yep. Seconded it. I seconded. Dana Post Adler is absent. Price Patton. No. Carol Perez? Yes. Annette Gray? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. John Brewer? No. Todd LaRue? Yes. All right. Congratulations and thank you. Thank and, you so uh, much. You have a good Thanks for being evening. willing to be flexible about it. No. Thank you again. Have a good evening. All right. Uh, moving on to 8B. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank you. 
Whenever you're ready, Mr. Brothers. Okay. Hello again, I will be speaking on item 8B, uh, Plaza 500, located at 500 Northeast 5th Avenue. The applicant is here. All right, and board members, any ex parte communication on this item? No. Nope. No. No. Nope. All right, seeing and hearing none, um, if you could just give your name and address for the record and the floor is yours. My name is Ray Powell. I'm the property manager for Interlock Properties here in Del Rey, and we're located at 466 uh, Northeast Fifth Avenue. Um, here today, we're working on a project that we purchased at 500 Northeast Fifth Avenue next door. I was here a few months back. We got a color change on the roofing material to the metal gray. Now I'm back. We would like to do a color change on the whole property. Uh, <clears throat> it, the property, we have two buildings in the back, and they're uh, real faded out yellow one front building is a real faded out blue the other one's a real faded out mint green we would like to do the whole property in white just base white no mixed colors with the uh, with the gray canopies right now it's got a canopy across the front of the buildings on the front on the back it has a walkway canopy leading into them all of those are in a real forest green we would like to go with the charcoal gray for the canopies as well as the awnings okay Mr. Carruthers. Okay, and I will begin my presentation. I'm um, again, uh, this is located at 500 Northeast Fifth Avenue. A consideration of a color change from the existing building colors of light blue and yellow to a base white um, and color changes to the awnings and canopies from forest green to gray. Um, again, this is located at 500 Northeast Fifth Avenue in the Central Business District, the Central Core Subdistrict. Uh, to the north, we have uh, Central Business District um, zoning, as well as to the south and to the east. To the west, we have Residential Office zoning, and the current land use is Commercial Core. And there, uh, as he stated, there are different buildings. So the buildings are 500, uh, 504, and 506 Northeast Fifth Avenue. Some of the businesses and services on site. Um, Primerica, there's a barber shop, chiropractor, massage, wellness spa, and a beauty salon, um, and a few others. So here we have the current conditions of the exterior of Building 1, uh, 500 Northeast Fifth Avenue. It's currently painted a light shade of blue uh, with a green awning. Um, the awning is kind of hard to see here, but it, um, it's to that building to the right in the first picture. Uh, here we have Building 2, um, 500 Northeast 5th Avenue, currently painted a light shade of yellow with a green awning. And here's another building, uh, 504 Northeast 5th Avenue, uh, currently painted a light shade of blue with green awnings. Uh, here we have uh, one of the buildings in the back, 506 Northeast 5th Avenue, uh, currently a shade of like an off-white or yellow um, with green awnings as well. All the buildings will be painted a base white. There is no proposed colors for the trim. Um, the awnings will be a gray material. Um, I do have a sample here to pass around. Uh, so again, um, so they do meet the objectives for NDC 2.6, so improving the appearance and function of visually prominent and distressed corridors in Delray Beach. Um, it's all, also located near the railway, um, so it meets policy for NDC 2.6.4, improving the appearance of the Delray Beach from the FEC and the CSX railways and Interstate 95, using strategies such as promoting public art opportunities, requiring landscape and using the development review process, the development review process to improve building vacates. Here are the required findings. Here are some options for the board. And here's just a final picture. Um, there were no renderings provided, but again, the colors proposed are a base white and the awnings will be a gray material in which I passed around.
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crothers. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak on this item? All right, seeing and hearing none, we'll close that portion of the meeting. Any additional comments or rebuttal? Yep. The only other thing I wanted to mention is on the onions where it says Alexander Chiropractor, mm -hmm. the only change we're making there is it's going to be the same type of awning, but we're doing away with the scallop. We're going with a straight face front. It'll be consistent throughout. Thank you. Mr. Crothers, any other comments from the city? No. All right, to the board then. And uh, Price, would you like to start? Um, no, no problems, thank you. Don? No, nothing. Net? Uh, my comments are similar to the previous item. And if a conversation can't be had about adding splashes of color, then my vote's gonna be no. All right, thank you. Carol? Okay, so we um, did we approve a metal roof mm -hmm. last time you were here? Excuse me? A metal roof. Did we approve a metal roof? Okay, because I, I remember um, the buildings. And all the awnings are going to have the same shape except for the one along Federal? No, the, the, the face, uh, the front that's facing the Federal mm -hmm. are all scalloped. So that's going to be straight. See, we're doing it straight across instead of the scallop look. And the other two awnings? The other two is the same. They'll, they'll do away with the scallop as well. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't really, I don't have any issues with it. Steven? Uh, well, white, very safe color. So um, I like the gray awnings, but I, I don't have any further questions. Bryce? You wouldn't already? Yeah, I already said I didn't have anything to say. All right. I don't, really don't have much to add either. I'd love to see a little splash of color in there, but um, I think it's okay as is. Uh, it's not the scale of the previous project, so <coughs> it's not going to be as dominant uh, a gray force along there. So I would entertain a motion. I'd like to move approval of the color change request from shades of light blue and yellow on the existing buildings to base white on the body of the structure and gray, dark gray for the awnings for the property located at 500, 506 Northeast Fifth Avenue. <coughs> by finding the request is consistent with the land development regulations and the comprehensive plan. Second. Thank you. Did Dana Post add Laura's absent Price Patton? Yes. Carol Perez? Yes. Annette Gray? No. Stephen Cutwin? Yes. John Brewer? Yes. Of the room? Yes. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on to the next item. 8C, Lynn Townhomes, Ms. Buse. Introduce the item and then do an ex parte. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Buse Planner, and this is file number 2021-195. This is Lynn Townhomes at 712 Northeast 8th Avenue, and the applicant is here. Thank you. Any ex parte communication on this item? No. Oh. Oh. No. No. Other than the four other times he's been here. <laughs> I drove by the site. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. And I don't have any as well. All right, the floor is yours. If you could introduce yourself and uh, your address and then proceed with your presentation. Uh, my name is Jared Collin. I'm here on behalf of Collin Builders, the GC for the project. My address is 4030 Murano Bay, Boynton Beach, Florida. Thank you. And maybe just move your microphone yeah. up. I think you're a little, okay. There you go. Yeah, perfect. Better. All right. Um, so I'm going to be presenting on Lynn Town Homes. You guys are somewhat familiar with it at this point. Um, so this is where it is on the corner of Northeast 7th and uh, Northeast 8th. So, um, here is a picture of the existing conditions. Here's from the uh, corner of the intersection right there, uh, kind of a view of the front of the property. Uh, here's another picture, gives a different angle of it and then from the Northeast. Here's a view from the uh, north side of the property. Um, and here's our development proposal. Here's the site plan. Um, so essentially it's just three townhome units um, all with a pool um, extensive landscaping a sidewalk um, and they're all around 2300 square feet to 2700 square feet um, 
here is this just dives deeper into the landscape plan. Um, so much is going on here because we really tried to emphasize the native town and everything else. Um, so it's kind of hard to dive deeper into without closely examining it, but we can dive deeper into once we get into questioning. Um, here is a picture of some of the existing vegetation to remain. Um, this is because it was not shown in the landscape plan. All of that bamboo is there to remain. Um, to essentially just close off the back of the um, property. Here's a rendering from that street corner. Um, if you could, if you recall the previous one I showed, this is what it will look like in the, in the future if we are gracious enough to get approved. Um, here's a view from the north. Um, this time we toned back a lot of the landscaping and made some changes to the windows, um, essentially just to break up the white space of that you guys made the comment on last time. We ended up adding more windows directly underneath and more windows um, throughout, really. Um, next is an elevation of the, um, the west side. We ended up adding a window right above the door, essentially just to break up the white space as well. Um, here is a view of the south elevation. Um, this does not depict the bamboo that will be back there, essentially blocking a lot of it out. So, um, so the zoning is uh, re residential multifamily. Um, so we're consistent with everything that's there per code. Um, and then I just kind of wanted to touch on the site plan analysis required findings. Um, so everything that's in the code we meet, we're there. Um, and yeah, so. and the requested action is of course for you guys to approve our project. So I will finish on this and let uh, Jennifer review the rest. Thank you very much. You. And Ms. Buse, when you're ready. Okay, this is a consideration of a class five site plan, the landscape plan and architectural elevations. This is in the RM um, zoning district. It is in the Palm Trail um, neighborhood. So on March 23rd, this was before you and it was voted four to zero to continue with the um, direction. And that night, um, some of the Concerns were the design of the sidewalk, location of the street trees, um, the proposed chain link fence in the rear, and the visual appeal of the middle unit. And it was back before you on April 27th with um, a vote of seven to zero to continue with the request um, with, dire with direction. And on that night, most of the con um, concerns had been taken care of and there were still some concerns with the lack of visual appeal due to the blank wall spaces on the north and west elevations and the lack of natural light. So tonight they're before you and they have changed um, some of their um, architectural elevations. They've added some additional windows here and here and here. And then on this elevation, They've added windows on here and here and down here. And these are just um, the architecturals. So I would like to point out, although this is not in the CBD um, zoning district, um, I went to the design guidelines and pulled out um, some of the different design guidelines for masonry um, modern. And some of the design guidelines that they have um, was their color palette is comprised of whites and creams with some sea greens and blue highlighted details. They do have some darker hues um, which may highlight the base of the building or emphasize the deeper recesses of the porches. Um, the design guidelines do consider flat roofs, single and double transom windows, punched open openings, the cantilevered eyebrows, and the color palette of um, white stucco with um, 
dark gray um, accents on certain elements, um, such as the garage doors and upper story balconies. Um, again, this is the site plan. Um, these are the, um, the, I'm sorry, I'm blanking the development standards, the performance standards that have been met. Um, this is just stating that a plat, um, once approved, has to be um, submitted and approved. This is the landscape plan. Um, uh, and this is just stating about the punched out um, sidewalk. This was um, a courtesy notice went out to the Palm Trail HOA, and I believe um, the Palm Trail HOA president um, emailed each one of you, and I believe we emailed you as well, and I believe it's on the diocese too. These are the required findings. And these, um, these are some of the comprehensive plan policies that um, back. These are the technical notes that need to be um, addressed before certification. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Ms. Buse. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to comment on this item? Seeing and hearing none, we'll close that portion of the meeting. Do you have any rebuttal or additional, additional testimony? Uh, just one thing I wanted to comment on. We did end up playing with the color scheme. Um, we we uh, had multiple options. We even had renderings done. Um, and then we found that our original color scheme was the best fit for our architectural style and for marketing purposes. Okay, thank you. Ms. Buse, anything else? I do have, um, I wanna get a clarification from the applicant. During his um, presentation, he mentioned during the architecturals or the um, colored renderings that you scaled back the landscaping. Was that just on oh, the that renderings? Was just the renderings, yeah. Okay. I just I wanted just... to uh, clearly show the elevations. <laughs> okay, was, yeah, that's all I wanted to know. <laughs> Jared, I also had uh, one question of clarification. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe I misunderstood, but I think there was a statement that the bamboo, which is going to remain, does, is not on the site plan or the landscape plan? It's, mm, Yes, I, it is on the landscape plan. Okay, that's fine. Just wanted to make sure that I was mm -hmm. correct. Thank you. Thank you. All right, to the board. John, would you like to start? Um, no, I don't have too many questions. I do want to, just so I can understand, where it says base district requirements um, on the, is it the um, site plan, the staff report. Um, if we go to the bottom, it says density. It yes. says six to 12 dwelling units per acre. And then when it says provided, it says three. The lot itself is a third. Shouldn't that be nine? Yes. Just, I don't think it's a big deal. I mean, well, I mean, I mean they're just providing taxes. three they're and providing you know, a third of an acre. So. If it's a so third I'm of an acre and you're saying it's three per acre, it's actually nine because we have to expand it out to an acre, right? Or you could say that it's... Um, so we're comparing apples to apples here. Two, 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 two to four per the area that, the, that they're allowed. And they're you're looking at it here, it's like, wow, they're only doing half of what they could do, but that's not the case. The right. case is actually that they're doing right in between six so and I, 12, which So is I calculated the density wrong, but they're only allowed three units. Right, okay. Right. So they're doing... They're allowed three and they're doing three. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just, just. And there's four units on there now. Right. Okay. Right. right. Not, okay. That was, that was my only question. It's that, that was just for clarification for me as I read more and more of these. Okay. That's it. That's really all I have. Net. I'm still a little challenged. I know then this is where, you know, legal comes in and say you can't design from the dais and we have someone coming back and forth. Uh, I think the applicant has made several efforts to um, address some of our comments. The windows looks to me like just little prison slides. Um, I think you're trying to do what we ask. Increase. Right. Um, 
try to do what we ask. I'm just going to leave it there. I'm not going to say I disagree. I think they did what they asked, what we asked, and still stayed within the architectural style. They substantially increased the window area, uh, increased the windows present, and stayed within the architectural style. But other comments? Other thoughts? No, oh, I'm sorry. I'm done. Carol? Okay. Yes, I think they've um, addressed the, you know, my comments. I appreciate you making the windows larger, and um, yeah, I'm I'm good with the landscape. Okay. Thank you. Stephen. Uh, no, I agree. I like the added windows. Um, and it, it, I, it is kind of a particular style. The windows are long and thin, but. I think it matches the style. I don't know. So I, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Bryce? Um, I was fine with it the first time. I was fine with it the second time. <laughs> I'm fine with it now. Um, and I will say that the uh, Palm Trail HOA is a very picky group. Yes. Um, and for them to uh, endorse it so uh, completely is, you know, just reinforces what I thought earlier. <clears throat> I really don't have anything to add. As I said, I think uh, I commend you for listening to the feedback, and I know it's been a little bit more lengthy process than you'd hoped for, but I think in the end it's going to be better for the project and better for the neighborhood, so thank you for that. Uh, and uh, get a motion. Sure. I'll move approval of the Class 5 2021-195 site plan, landscape plan, and architectural elevations. For Lynn Townhomes at 712 Northeast 8th Avenue by finding the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets criteria set forth in the land development regulations. Second. Dana Post Adler is absent. Bryce Batten? Yes. Carol Perez? Yes. Annette Gray? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. John Brewer? Yes. John LaRue? Yes. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Ms. Buse, looks like you're up next. Um, I guess before I open it, this is item number 202106. This is a class two. Um, this is at 10 North Ocean Boulevard. And the applicant is here. Are we on the right one? Oh, I have the wrong one up. MD, right? You can vote on that one right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any ex parte communication on this item? No. No. Oh. Nope. No. Nope. None. All right. Mr. Iliopoulos, if you could introduce yourself and your address and take it away. Thank you, Mr. Chair and board members. Uh, my name is Gary Leopolis. My address is 1045 East Atlantic Avenue. We are GE Architecture. We will be presenting uh, the Opal Grand uh, to you tonight. Um, let me just make sure I can get the clicker right here. Maybe not. Okay. Um, so this is the area of the hotel that we are actually talking to you about tonight. Um, I'm going to do a little brief history on this project uh, as far as to give you an idea where it's been at. Uh, staff did a great job of outlining all the things about this project. For some who don't know, the original hotel here was the Seacrest. It did get knocked down in the early 80s. 83, they built a Holiday Inn. The Holiday Inn uh, then got changed to the Marriott. That was in 1995. In 95, it was interesting because the fact is the whole north side of this property became a deal with the city, and that's why we have a fire station. We actually have some public parking over there. What I've highlighted on the screen right now are basically previously approved master plan areas where we've improved on the hotel. Uh, some of the things that we've done was expanded on their pool deck. One of the big things as they become more successful, they needed more space around their pool. We've added townhouses along the south uh, east corner. Those are two-story townhouse cabanas. We've added a restaurant along Atlantic, which recently just opened as The Drift. Uh, our next phase on that part will be an event deck on top of that. 
Further to the west on the corner of Atlantic and Andrews is actually going to be an approved hotel wing over there. And then along the north side over by the fire station, we actually did a banquet kitchen facility to help work the bigger events on this property. Um, so what's happening recently is that they were looking at the seating and it's been one of the problems around their hotel pool area that they don't have enough seating for the guests. The thought was the following, there is an existing driveway that basically they take the people, the valet, to the north and to the underground parking of the building. So this is the area that we're basically talking about. Uh, we're going to maintain the road that's there and we're actually going to build a raised pool deck above it. In essence, we're going to be digging down into the earth and allowing the cars to go by while people are above it watching or seeing the ocean. Uh, just highlighting what the existing parameters are of this property. Uh, that is our uh, front setback. So we are actually maintaining. We're literally going right over the driveway that is already there. Limits of the construction. And then highlighting our proposed pool deck, which will have fire pits, uh, canopies, and uh, planters around it along with seating. Uh, handicap ramps to access it. There's how it is today. Uh, you can also see, obviously, the recent renovations to it, which was previously a Mediterranean. This is now looking at that proposed deck. This is actually looking from the pool, looking towards the east. Uh, this is on the north side. And that's how it'll be after that. Again, these are from the north and south. And this is the existing east. And basically, that's what you'd be seeing with the decorative railings route. That concludes the presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions should you have any. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Ms. Peace. So I just have to say this project started at the beginning of COVID. <laughs> and um, we were, it was the, what was the? Um, that they had to get because of the digging underneath. And so it is just finally coming to the board. And I do not have pretty pictures like Mr. Iliopoulos. can't see where to go up to the top and find slideshow up there I think you can click on that and then in that menu you can start the start from the beginning should be one of the options there you go there. okay sorry about that okay this is a class two um, for the construction of the raised pool deck and the enclosed ve vehicular access way from the north parking lot to the main entrance this is in the CBD um, Central Business District, and we have um, community facilities, open space, CBD to the south, and we have the ocean and RM to the east and west. So we are demolishing the existing pool, or what is proposed is demolishing the existing pool, a fence, low wall, and four piers, and replacing them with the raised pool deck and um, with decorative aluminum guardrails modifying the existing road from the north parking lot to the main entrance, relocating the pool equipment um, and the pool shower, installing new planter boxes at the stairs and ramp of the pool deck and at the end of the deck, the installation of the fire pit and installing additional landscaping and lighting associated with the areas being improved. So these are the required findings. This is the driveway, the current driveway now. This is the area of work that's going to be done. This is the um, proposed raised pool deck in the driveway. And this is just the fire pit, the planters, and the um, stairs. 
the, this is just some architectural elevations that um, Mr. Iliopoulos had some really pretty pictures of. So um, with a class two, it comes before you um, for modifications to site plans and master developments. Since this is in the central business district, we looked at um, the primary and secondary streets and alleys and required retail frontage. And um, the raised pool deck will bring some activity and use closer to the street. And some other requirements, um, lighting. Um, what's really important here is the turtle lighting. And so we are under the Palm Beach County Code of Ordinances and that meets um, the requirements through Palm Beach County. And we also did our requirements for lighting as well. And the off-street parking is not affected as um, the tunnel does not increase the number of guest rooms um, and the increase in the pool area does not increase the number of um, guest rooms as well. This is the required findings for landscaping. This is the plan, landscape plan and it's been found to be in compliance. And these are just some of the um, comprehensive plan objectives. And the DDA recommended approval on March 9th of 2020. Wow. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak on this item? All right, seeing and hearing none, we'll close that portion of the meeting. Mr. Iliopoulos, any additional testimony or rebuttal testimony? No, Mr. Chair. Jen, anything else? I do not. All right, to the board then, and uh, Annette? I don't actually have any comments. I think it's very innovative. Okay, thanks. Carol? Yep, I'm just wondering how the tunnel's draining and how that works. Okay, so what happens is we actually do have an underground drainage system there, and believe it or not, the pipe, so the pipe was already there for the driveway that was there, and was deep enough because it was below the actual driveway. We're flowing it to the north. We have catch basins to the north that are actually deeper underground, and it's gonna pick it up there, and then actually we're draining it towards the west where our parking garage is. So it's gonna go a ways around the site, but it's actually an existing system and was already deep enough. We took the tunnel just enough so that we wouldn't go below that, and we maintained so you can drive underneath it. So everything was based on that drainage. All right, so is it gravity or you, do you pump it? It's gravity. Okay. Yeah, I, I reviewed the landscape plan, and um, it all looks good to me. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen? It looks fine to me. What, what, what do you, what's happening on the deck? Is it just seating? And what, 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 what kind of? Vent? Uh, it'll just be for the beach, I mean, for the uh, pool guest people, for them to sit up there and sunbathe. Uh, like I said, there will be a fire pit there. Uh, that would be for those, obviously, from the northeast, if you've ever been to this hotel, the northeast, we actually do get quite a bit of a breeze there. One of the things they're looking at with this raised deck, it will block off a lot of it. So during the colder months, which you want people out there January and February, that breeze gets cut down. Um, at night, it's not used because uh, they don't have a lifeguard. So, you know, there is no uh, lighting that would be on beyond what Jennifer has already talked about, which is the turtle lighting for the tunnel. No questions. All right, Bryce. Yeah, what, what's the um, what's the clearance at the entrance and the exit? Because I I think I'm pretty cool with a clearance in the middle, but looks like it's kind of tight at the entrance. Yeah, we are at we're going to be at eight feet. Eight feet, so yeah. it's pretty much SUVs can get through there and stuff. Yeah, so That's picture fine. this: most parking garages are literally designed at seven feet. Okay. So with the eight, we'll be fine. And there's no uh, pedestrian ingress or egress through there. No, there's not. Only we have walkways on the north side and the south side. This tunnel probably will be used by the valet because this is strictly 100% valet parking that they have there. Okay, that was that was my only question. Thanks. Yep. Oh, wait, one one. So how much how much higher when you're sitting on that deck? How much higher are you than the pool deck? Four feet. It is just four feet. Yeah. That's right. So. Okay, I just don't I get how you get from four feet above. Uh, the, the pool deck to an, an eight foot high opening. Because what happens is the existing pool deck is already higher than the road. That's already higher too, yeah. okay. But I think it's approximately, on that one I don't know the price, the exact number, I think it's two feet higher than the road and then we're dropping it and then we're going up. 
Okay. I'm, okay, thanks. Huh? No, but I, I mean, I don't have much to say. It's, uh, it's been, I remember 1983 when the Holiday Inn came in there. That was kind of a big deal. <laughs> Boy, has Delray Beach changed. Um, uh, it, it's, it's a great project. I mean, what a creative use of the space. Everything that's kind of come in there, it's just turned into a, a, a crown um, a crown jewel. And I guess that's going to be uh, some prime seating for 4th of July. Yeah, there you go. And the only thing I would add is the Opal Grand, just so you do know, it is Ocean Properties. Uh, their corporate headquarters is here. They own over 150 hotels around the country and the world. And anything that says Opal is now their own personal brand. So they are not affiliated with anything. So it's not Marriott. It's not Holiday Inn. It is strictly the Walsh's property. And Opal refers to their hotel. Love it. And glad you guys are turtle compliance. I mean, it's a great <laughs> Very romantic, cool thing about Delray. I saw some the other day come in and, you know, walking on the beach and seeing the turtles uh, nesting there. It's a good thing. So I think it's an awesome project. And watching this whole thing evolve, this whole property evolve, has just been amazing. So thank you very much. I'll, I'll add to that, Gary. You've done a remarkable job. I know the, the Walshes are really moving this into a premier level, and, and your work has been very um, instrumental in making that, that effect. I do have a couple of questions. Yep. Um, I know that sometimes the valets park vehicles along that drive now. Um, is that going to be strictly prohibited in the tunnel? Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely will be there. Um, right now what they're starting to do is use their back tennis court. It, okay. There was an old tennis court on the back side of their building, which – they did away with years ago. So now valet guys are actually taking cars to there. Okay. And that's the route they've been taking. That's a good point. Because yeah. sometimes they'll get the keys and stage them. Yeah. And then move Especially them. for high-end clients, the they want to have it close and, yeah. Yeah, the bigger issue that they had amongst the family was the uh, buses, that a lot uh, of people bring the buses and they like to park the buses there. So that's been an ongoing battle with the family of saying, where are the buses going? Some of the brothers are saying, we don't care. The other ones are saying, well, we'll just move them. Don't worry. So they do have to work out some of that stuff, but they felt this was yeah. a good investment. Won't be any buses in an eight-foot tunnel. That's no, for sure. Definitely won't, no. <laughs> All right. Other question I had is, do they currently do any day use uh, resort um, use of that pool? Can you come into the hotel and get like a day use resort pass? Um, that would add to the parking because I'm just you know if you, if you add the the seating then yeah I, I I they I mean I know some some hotels do that and I know many yeah, don't but they don't but I can't tell you that people don't sneak in yeah. I believe my kids have done that um, so but yeah no they they their rates now and I think somebody mentioned you know they are stepping their game up at that one they don't. They prefer not to have it open to the public. Uh, they do have, of course, the two pool areas. The Cabanas down the south has the pool area, but they're focusing on their guests right now. They definitely are. All right. Thank I'd you. I'd say no much. to that. Uh, don't have anything else. Uh, anyone else? Any other comments? I'd entertain a motion then. Sure. I'd like to move approval of the Class 1 Site Plan Modification 2020-106 associated with the construction of a raised pool deck above enclosed vehicular access way from the north parking lot to the main entrance for the Opal Grand Hotel located at 10 North Ocean Boulevard, finding that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets the criteria set forth in the land development regulations. Just a clarification, I think you said class one site plan. I don't know class what the two. wording, but it is class two. Class yep. two site plan. All right, second. I'll second. Thank you, Carol. Michelle, when you're ready. Chris Adler is absent. Chris Patton? Yes. Carl Perez? Yes. Annette Gray? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. John Brewer? Yes. John LaRue? Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Don't go far. <laughs> next. All right. Next item. Uh, it's Alvarez. I believe you're up.
appreciate it. Uh, so this is this item is a recommendation from you to the city commission for a uh, a waiver request regarding the reduction of the front setback requirement. And this is associated with a class three site plan modification. Again, just the waiver is before you. Class three would come to you at another date. Uh, and this is associated with modifications to the front elevation uh, that include the removal of the, um, the existing arcade, the, uh, 325 East Atlantic Avenue, by the way. <laughs> uh, removal of the arcade, addition of um, 396 square feet along the front and other modifications to the rear and new canopies and doors. So the applicant will provide their presentation. Thank you very much. And board members, any ex parte communication on this item? No. 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 I drove I've, by I've known the applicant for 30 years. But well, we talked about the purchase of it, I think, maybe, but we didn't talk about the proposal. All right. And I did receive an email on the, on the project from uh, the gallery owner. Uh, nearby, um, basically speaking to the uh, historic aspects and um, asking us to consider the recent report that was given to the city about uh, historic aspects of the commercial corridor. Yeah, that was part of the record, I think, yeah. I received that as well. I received that also, and I drove by the site. Right. Thank you very much. All right, if you could state your name and address for the record, and the floor is yours. Sure, Stephen Cohen. I live at 1140 Bohemia Road in Delray Beach. And I'll give you a little history of behind this project. Um, I moved here in 82 and I've been working hard to help Delray become the great town it is. And um, some of you may know some of these places I brought here. Uh, Louis Louis, Sunset Cafe, Twilight Cafe, Safari Steakhouse, Art Brian. Now, um, Back a little. I think Mr. Brewer, I heard him say he remembers the Holiday Inn, so he's been here long enough. And I know Price has been here long enough. I don't know how everyone else. But this is back when there was nothing here downtown. And there was a, bl a blinking yellow light in front of Sal's sports shop, which was across the street from the office. And there was nothing going on here. But I really believe that we can make this town special if we can get some more pedestrians coming down here and if we can get some restaurants. So ultimately, um, I kept working on this, and Louie Louie became The Office. Sunset Cafe became Trist. Uh, Twilight Cafe became Starbucks. Safari Steakhouse became Bull Bar, and now Tin Roof. Um, Native Sun became Coco's. I forgot Native Sun. Anybody remember that? Okay. I had to talk him into moving on this side of the Intracoastal because they were down by the beach, and it didn't work down there. Um, then I also brought Worthing Place here, and I brought Salt and Park. I also built the VFW and El Camino. So I've done a lot of work here over a lot of time. And although a lot of you may not know me, I'm kind of a low key guy here in town. I really spent my life making this town something special. So the city was always saying to me, Steve, great job at all those restaurants, Sazio, The Office, El Camino's, Tiki, Racks, Bull Bar. We need more retail. And so I did bring in a Native Son, which became Coco's. Uh, I moved Twilight Cafe to have him join his brother um, down at, uh, what's the rest? The Green Owl. He joined his brother at the Green Owl. And then we brought Sunglass Hut in there. Um, so I, I saw a chance here. Uh, Mr. Cook was looking to retire. And, and we know the same people. And we talked about it. I was able to buy that older building and a chance to bring more retail in here. Didn't want to put another restaurant in. The city didn't want another restaurant in. And I didn't want to do that battle. But I really saw the opportunity here to make that block pop, especially for retail. Um, and, and I could, by right, have knocked that building down and gone up three stories. But I really think we need the retail component to mix in with the restaurant, as I did feel that we needed the residential component with Worthing Place to drive the town in the proper direction. I think that has worked well. But um, so on the retail, when I started marketing it, uh, our feedback was we, we're, we don't want to go in that building unless the people across the street can look over and see our goods. The people driving by on the street can see our goods. It's well lit. And you know it's just too dark with the canopy there. And um, so uh, I, I looked into raising up the canopy. But it's, it was still making it tunnel-like, and, and nobody liked it. Um, then I looked into um, uh, just negotiating more with the people who are coming for it and 
we, I looked at how it was uh, before 1974 when they put the canopy on, uh, which was 47 years ago. And it, it was a, just all windows, and it was all retail, and it looked great, and it, I think it works great, and I'm putting it back in its original condition. Um, I thought we were, were coming here tonight to go over the whole project, but it was not until late last week that I learned that that was somehow pulled, and now we're only here to discuss the setbacks. Um, I'm going to segue over to Gary for the details on that, but that's the genesis of why I'm doing this on this block. I think we need some more retail. I think this will really work as a retail and, and balance the city out. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Mr. Chair and the board, uh, for the record, my name is Gary Leopolis. Address is 1045 East Atlantic Avenue. Uh, I represent GE Architecture and my client, Mr. Cohen. Um, so he, he, he obviously did do a little brief history about the downtown area. We all know that it's about balance. Uh, it's balance with residents, it's balance with retail, and it's balance with restaurants. Uh, and yes, by right, obviously there are a lot more that we can do with this building. Um, I will tell you that when I first talked to Steve about this, I said, yeah, let's look at the canopy, let's look at working it. He said, well, you can look at it, but I can't get anybody to move in. Uh, he goes, it just doesn't work. Um, I tried and I agreed with him that looking at it, it was the depth, it's the proportions. Um, but more to the point is what he already said, it's by right. <laughs> by right, the building is not in historic district. Yes, I do feel, and I never go against staff, I love staff, I do feel it was a little um, deceiving when I saw last week, literally, maybe it was the week before, there was a presentation to the commission about historic and doing a historic district downtown and they actually featured the former hands. Um, everybody in the city, at least in the department, knows we were coming in to remove this. So I was, I was disappointed, but I didn't speak. That's fine. We were moving forward. We presented this back in February and March to the city so they knew what we were proposing. Um, so let me try to move this along a little bit for you guys. Again, um, as Steve mentioned, we were not planning on uh, just coming here for setback issues. Um, most of you probably already know the location. I think I heard somebody drove by it, so there you go. So we, we should be covered there. Uh, but you do see that we are just east of the railroad tracks along the north side of Atlantic. There's the photo. So I think it's important to look at that photo. I, I think it just summarizes what Steve talked about. Um, you look at the darkness that's in there. Um, there are no cars in front of it right now. But usually, there are cars in front of it. So you got to understand what you're dealing with in downtown area where you want retail. You want glass. You want storefronts. You want to be seen. Uh, as much as staff talks about in the report that it's pedestrian, and oh, by the way, when they did the guidelines in 2015, this is what they based it on, these type of arcades. I get it. It is charming. But the bottom line is this arcade actually architecturally is monolithic. It doesn't really do anything for the building, and the proportions are wrong. But it is also amazing that we can take an arcade and go right up to the street. This thing is two feet off of the street, which is well into the right of way. Um, here's the back. Um, interesting, the back color, I, I know I've heard several comments tonight about colors. Um, actually, David Cook called me on this one because we had done a French bakery on North Federal Highway that this color came up. And he called me because I love the color. I want to paint the back of my building that color. Give me the chip. So. Uh, we helped them out there. You're going to see we're making some minor changes along the rear. One of the things that staff talked about was obviously how you enter uh, these future retail stores, if you will, on Atlantic, but you do also have the access from the rear, which is where the parking lots are. So here's basically the building as you would know it today, uh, the south side right now being Atlantic. You're going to see that kind of like sawtooth type uh, existing storefront. And along the north side, we've kind of shaded in the blue where parking is, and then there's some planters up there. So interesting enough, again, let's talk about the history of the building. So the building, um, you're talking about now staff had in there, but I think it might have been the east portion of this was done in 1921. We have the original drawings. It was actually what we found was 1934. The rear of the building was added on in 58. Um, now the part that has the two dates, that's where actually Lonnie Cook, David Cook's father, owned that portion. Then you had the backs uh, added, uh, that was in 74, along with the arcade. So the three owners were Quentin Miner, Vince Canning, and Lonnie Cook. 
Um, they thought it was a great idea to add this uh, awning, or I should say the arcade in 74. Um, interesting enough, just for the record, that uh, our Mark Denkler actually was the uh, owner of Vince Canning and did vote on this at the DDA, and he acknowledged both ways. He said basically, yes, our store was very successful without the arcade, and it was successful with the arcade. But he says, I do understand retail. People want to be seen. Um, you know, when I keep on hearing about the pedestrian experience, it's about, well, this provides shelter. It provides shade from the sun for the pedestrians. You got to consider the owner and you got to consider the tenants and how can they be successful. So that always has to come into play and you have to be respectful of that. And I do believe the character of the downtown. So here's what we are looking at. This is the existing conditions that you're seeing. Now, I threw some dimensions in there. Um, it's just, you gotta understand that depth that you're talking about. It, they are really deep. Um, but what's interesting enough is these buildings are all non-conforming. You're gonna see that actually along the east side, the far east side, if, or on the right, if you will, um, that actually goes into the right of way right now, seven and a half inches, that little weird jog there. So here's what we have going on here. And I, I will tell you this, that when Steve called me on this one, I said, you know, I really don't prefer to work downtown. I'm, I'm too old. I can't handle it. Uh, it won't be easy. Oh, it's going to be easy. It's just a simple facade change. <laughs> it's been brutal. Okay, brutal. Um, and, I, and I don't even mean that taking away from staff. They, got, they literally have the LDRs. They got to go by, and they're going by it. But here's what you have. You are seeing where the setbacks are. You're seeing the building is well into the front setback. You're seeing the property line. Let's change it up a little bit. Of course, we hear that um, the city is going to be asking for an additional right-of-way. I don't know when they're expanding Atlantic, but I just don't see it when we're talking historic and everything, but they need additional right-of-way. I get it. It's usually for safety reasons, other things like that. Um, but you're seeing some of the depths there that the existing building goes beyond the front setback. So there's the arcade that we are talking about uh, and that we will be removing. Uh, one of the things is that you got to think about how these arcades work when they are properly done They actually are a great feature, but it's also safe when they are deep and dark It creates other situations that are not quite safe that you would think also the visibility cuts down quite a bit for the pedestrians and cars Right here's another section going through it basically just showing you how deep that glass is set back into the building So here's the article came out in 1974 uh, how they built this uh, and it was obviously store to create a new atmosphere. That's what they were doing um, and, I, and I guess we can all say that we've been through that arcade probably one time or another uh, The question is did it really make it more viable for somebody to buy something in there? When we talk about historic buildings and I am not ranking on any previous owner But anytime somebody owns a building if they really feel passionate enough, they have the right to put something on the designated uh, register this was not so you know I think that's important to take into account I'm only bringing this stuff up because staff really does hit hard about that arcade so there's the north or I'm sorry the west side of the arcade you're looking at and there's the east side and you can see how it pinches down because the building goes on an angle it's all existing uh, we're not modifying that stuff um, they really talked about the guidelines, talked about that arcade, how important it was to the Del Rey, but yet the sample in the LDRs and the design guidelines is not that arcade. It's a different one. It's one that's not as deep. It's nice and light and airy and actually works great for the retail and has very high arched openings so you can see in. I think that's a very important point to be considering when people are talking about keeping this arcade. Again, the basic footprint that we're talking about. Now, here's what we're doing. We're actually requesting tonight to take the storefront that's on an angle and actually just straighten it out. We're not going, to, I gotta be clear about this, we're not going beyond what I call the building footprint. Building footprint being the columns that all face along Atlantic Avenue. We're basically taking the glass and we're straightening it out. Um, this is really for the tenants. Anytime you're doing a window display, it's always easier to work with these straight angles, 90 degree angles versus doing all these other kooky little angles that the, the part of Vince Canning, uh, Mark always did say, yeah, it was kind of nice. People would stand in there when it was raining, but you know, we were trying to go out there and bring them back in because it was a kind of a weird shape that they had on that last bay that you see. 
One of the things that you'll also see is that we're only talking about a small amount of square footage. In the downtown area, if you do expand a building, uh, you get a one-time exemption on a parking space when you're staying under that criteria, and we are staying under it. Uh, we're showing this right here is the pedestrian way. So there's certain things that they do have in the guidelines that you have to maintain. We are showing the six-foot clear pedestrian zone. Uh, we're also showing what they call the clear zone along from the curb zone, I should say. But now with the new right-of-way, uh, we are shifting two feet back. We're actually adjusting all the setbacks. So that actually increased our request tonight for you. The fact is that it changed another two feet from the original structure. Uh, we uh, do have landscaping uh, that we are putting in there. Uh, we also have, uh, again, I'm highlighting that pedestrian way. One of the interesting things was it became a big issue about a light pole. Um, <laughs> the city couldn't light up the street, so they put the light on hands. Uh, when we took the arcade down, naturally they said we had to do it, which is fine. We're doing it. They wanted to know if we were going to power it. We said no, we feel that the city should power it. We shouldn't have to. Uh, but that, that was an item that we had to go through. Um, Basically, along the back, uh, just to give you guys an idea, uh, we did a whole landscape plant, redid the whole landscaping. Uh, that got taken off because the mature trees back there that are under power lines, uh, we couldn't replace them with equal. So the city basically said, then you don't have to do any landscaping back there. Leave it as is. So we did. Um, one of the things you wanted to find on these buildings are the front canopies. We have uh, three various canopies. One of the things that did come up with the DDA when they were talking about this project was they wanted a better rendering and description of materials. They wanted to make sure they could understand that we were really changing stuff. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think you mentioned about somebody talking about the historic character. There was a strong no on that board. Uh, they do have a shop on the Ave and felt that the canopy or arcade should stay. So here's the sections and we just basically will highlight some of the materials that we're doing. Uh, we're, we're basically going to be trying to break up these three bays with some unique materials so that you guys can see that we are changing it and yet we're trying to give it a little bit of character. We're not just trying to do just regular storefront entry things. Uh, this is basically a raised rib stucco banding that we're doing above which I had highlighted before was actually a whitewash brick. Um, basically we're going to have transoms over all the openings. Now the transoms the inside these stores are actually too low. They don't meet what you'd want the retail to be. So right now what we're doing is we're cutting into the block and we're creating a transom and it's gonna be lit up at night, but it'll give the illusion that it is open, but it's actually not. Um, and all three, again, will have various types of awnings, if you will, canopies. Now one of the things that staff is, and we're talking about tonight is that so on the either side of this retail, we actually have a white built out pilaster. So we are trying to find this. Uh, yes, that means we are going uh, closer into the setback or more into the setback than we normally would have, but it was the only way to try to break up the architecture. I think the other thing, when you look at that arcade that we're talking about, the biggest thing that Steve was running into is people want identity. People need to be seen. They want to know that they stand out. And when you have the arcade, you don't stand out because you can't get signage below the arched opening so they can be seen. So the center one is going to have similar things with regards to these are decorative aluminum panels that we're going to be putting on the building. Um, we also have the transom glass. We're breaking up the storefront a little different. And then we have a decorative uh, aluminum louvered canopy that will allow light in, but yet they're going to be on an angle so that it can divert the sun so the sun doesn't go right into the space. And then along the east side, um, this one is scored stucco. Uh, we do also have um, an awning that's coming out. That's an aluminum canopy that will be coming out. Underneath, or I should say above, we have louvered. Again, it's a transom. It's going to be um, aluminum louvered uh, lighting behind it, and then you have the signage in front. Again, giving it a various lighting direction for at night. And then we have basically decorative wood that you do see on a lot of the modern buildings right now, but it does give a little earth tone uh, feeling to the building. Uh, these are just the various canopies showing. And again, this was more for when we were at DDA. They wanted to know, is there a difference between them? And we were just showing the sections through them, saying how they did vary all of them. 
Uh, along the back, basically what you do in the uh, guidelines is you're supposed to uh, at least try to bring the back towards the front, the front towards that. We're basically going with one color along there because it is really receiving, although there are ways that people can come in through the parking lot, but it is considered the rear. Uh, there are existing barrel tile roofs. We are replacing those all with metal roofs and replacing some of the windows and doors with impact rated. And that is our proposed rendering. Um, Again, I, I think it's, it, it's important to look at how we've come through this. I think tonight, like we said, you are dealing with a waiver. This is a setback waiver. Um, I think the important thing is that it's non-conforming, folks. And I don't understand when I have something that's non-conforming and we have an arcade that's so non-conforming because we want to take it down, all of a sudden now it's a bigger issue. I don't think it's fair and I don't think you can have it both ways. I think when you look at the criteria and that being for the waiver, I think it's, it's pretty straightforward. When you talk about LDR section 4.413 K5B2 CBD waivered standards. Uh, within the CBD, the following standards shall be used by the City Commission, SPRAB or HBB, when considering waiver requests in addition to the findings in Section 2.4.7 B5. The waiver shall not result in an inferior pedestrian experience along the primary streets, such as exposing parking garages or large expansions of wall, blank walls. Well, I think we've demonstrated that we're not doing that. We're not, we don't have a parking garage. I think we've decked uh, how should I say, decorated these elevations so that they're pleasing and we're still maintaining our six foot clear zone along with a four foot curb zone so that you can walk by there. Staff will talk about, well, wait a minute, what if I'm looking in the window? Can I get by? Well, I think you can get by plenty with 10 feet. I don't think that's an issue. We actually have a few more feet before you get to the glass. I don't think that's an issue, considering most of the restaurants you can't even get by with the five feet that they leave. So I don't think that's going to be a problem for people that want to shop and buy here. I think it's also important to understand the two uh, definite tenants that he does have. This is important because we talk about who's coming to town. We have Coco Company going in there, Morley's. They're local, folks. That's good. We have local people coming in. This is not something that's coming from out of state, big corporate. Uh, the waiver shall not create a significant incompatibilities with the nearby buildings or uses of land. All right, so you go a couple bays over or whatnot, you have restaurants, you have clubs, bars, you have retail. I think we're fitting in perfect. When you look at everywhere along that north side of Atlantic, everybody has approximately four to five foot canopies coming out. They don't have arcades. I think we fit right in with everybody else. The waiver shall not erode the conductivity and the streets and the sidewalk network negatively impacting any uh, opted bicycle pedestrian master plan. I, I think we're, we're still maintaining it. Again, these are existing buildings. Uh, and as my client stated, we could have knocked down the buildings. We're not. We're maintaining the existing footprints. The waiver shall not reduce the quality of civic open space provided under this code. Well, I, I don't think that's an issue because there was no civic space there. Uh, and, you know, the amount of square footage that we're doing, which is 300 and some odd square feet, doesn't kick that in. Um, as far as LDR Section 2.47B5, waiver findings, prior to the granting of the waiver, the granting body shall make the findings that the granting of the waiver, A, shall not adversely affect the neighbor area. I think we've demonstrated that we're not. Shall not significantly diminish the provision of the public facilities. We're definitely not affecting the public facilities. If anything, we're helping the public facilities because we're adding a street light to help the pedestrians along that street shall not create an unsafe situation. I would tell you that these canopies, the deep arcades, can create an unsafe condition at late night hours when people are walking through there because it is so deep you're not even seen from the public eye. Um, does not result in the granting of a special privilege in the same waiver would be granted under similar circumstances in other properties for other applicants or owners. I would tell you if you have an old historic building downtown, as staff has stated, and we're maintaining the same footprint, that you would grant them the same right because they are existing and they're already in the front setbacks as we are. Um, that concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer it. And obviously, you know my client is still here too to help out any way he can. Thank you very much. Thank you. So 
I might surprise you. I don't think all I'm going to talk about is the arcade. <laughs> but <laughs> we will. Oh, geez. I can't see it with my glasses or without. Um, there it is. Okay, again, this is solely the front setback waiver. It's not the class three site plan modification. Um, we're not talking about materials or any other uh, specific details on the um, modifications. So, properties on the north side of East Atlantic Avenue. East Atlantic Avenue, this part of it anyways, is in the CBD Central Core Subdistrict. Um, it's clearly an important part of our city. It's designated as a primary street. Uh, it's designated as required retail frontage. It's part of the limited height area and also part of our parking district. So there's uh, a lot of criteria or requirements that are applied to it um, to try to maintain the historic character and scale. And the proposed uses are um, retail, as was talked about, um, and that's, those are the um, uses that previously existed. So our existing setback, and this is what we're looking at tonight, the existing setback of the building is um, zero feet to 11 feet, four inches, and this is taking into consideration the uh, two foot right of way dedication. The proposed setback, because of the areas highlighted in red on the right, uh, is zero feet, seven feet, zero feet, <laughs> It's got the range. Zero feet to seven feet, nine inches. Um, you can see where the existing nonconformity, not taking the arcade into consideration, the existing nonconformity, um, once the arcade is removed, is being increased. Yeah. So just so you can see in our uh, CBD requirements in the LDR, what is uh, desired in the graphic of how a, a storefront frontage type would look on our on our streets and um, and our minimum building setback is 10 feet to 15 feet and again we're providing from zero feet to seven feet nine inches so it's <laughs> here we go with the arcade <laughs> so um, it's the removal of the arcade, the proposed removal of the arcade, that changes the applicable minimum setback requirements. Um, the arcade in its current form, um, the setbacks are fine. You just need a 10 foot space, and I'll get into that on a different slide. But it's the removal that is adjusting the uh, setback requirements. And then, uh, the infill of those uh, recessed entries on the uh, different retail bays. But looking at the arcade frontage type, um, it has provided shade and shelter for pedestrians for nearly 50 years. It was constructed in 1974. It does contribute to our superior pedestrian experience along Atlantic Avenue. And it was the model, even though it's not in our guidebook, <laughs> we used other great examples. But um, it was the model for the arcade frontage type when we uh, adopted our new CBD uh, regulations in 2015, and that was a result of community input uh, as the uh, pedestrian experience that the arcade provided was, was very much valued. The current arcade, again, it complies with the minimum 10-foot depth, and um, they see, uh, the regulations do provide various incentives to encourage arcades. So um, CBD regulations acknowledge that there might be a, a need for a front setback waiver. However, it specifies that waivers to decrease the minimum front setback, um, they're permitted, but if they won't result in a streetscape that doesn't meet the minimum requirements. But uh, yet we're not meeting <laughs> those uh, minimum requirements completely. The graphic on the screen uh, shows the complete minimum streetscape that is required. They are providing the curb zone, the minimum four feet, 
they are providing the minimum six feet of the pedestrian clear zone. Again, it's the remaining front setback that has not been provided. So a section of the street uh, streetscape that is being provided, and we've already gone over the dimensions. Just a comparison of the um, the elevation with the um, with the plan, and again, we've gone over the shaded areas, and then those added um, columns or pilasters uh, that are part of the canopy on the bay on the left. Those are all um, the areas that are non-compliant. Just wanted to provide an example of what the streetscape dimensions and requirements. Uh, desire um, for our city. You, you see in the rendering on the right, you've got the curb zone and everything that's happening in that area. Pedestrian clear zone, you can you know, go back and forth and hopefully not run into anybody, but yet more importantly, the remaining setback, you provide an area for people who want to stop and window shop and they are able to move out of the way of those that are moving in the pedestrian clear zone. We all know that Atlantic Avenue is busy, uh, which is great. We, um, everybody wants to come here, so we want to make sure that we are providing um, ample space. And just an example, Worth Avenue, which actually does have quite a few great arcades. Um, just we found this example. There's some people window shopping and, and walking along and they're providing their curb zone and their pedestrian clear zone and again providing recesses for people to window shop. So your findings, you've got two sets of findings. You've got your typical waiver findings uh, that are part of the LDR where the request should not adversely affect the neighboring area, not create an unsafe situation, and um, of course, not grant a special privilege, something that you wouldn't consider for somebody else in a similar circumstance. But then, of course, there are specific CBD waiver criteria um, where we don't want to res we don't want the waiver to result in an inferior pedestrian experience. Uh, that's a lot of uh, what this is about not allowing the creation of significant incompatibilities and not eroding the connectivity of the street and sidewalk network. So the, um, the DDA saw the request at their June meeting. They reviewed the complete class three site plan modification. At that time, unfortunately, it had not been identified that a waiver would be uh, requested, would be needed. So it was not spe specifically part of the presentation or specifically part of the consideration. They did provide a recommendation of six to one, um, on a vote of six to one um, on the complete uh, request. And they did have some suggestions. Their complete memo is provided as an attachment. So of course you've got multiple uh, board actions um, and that's that's it thank you very much is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak on this item yes please come to the podium over here to your left and if you would just state your name and address for the record and then go ahead with your comments you have three minutes Alice Finst, 707 Place, Tevond. Um, I have been here since the 70s. And to do something as dramatic as this proposal presents, it takes away the charm of the street. What we're going to have is one more set of awnings down Atlantic Avenue. Well, what does that do for us? No. Don't take away the charm of the street. And I'm questioning why this isn't going to the Historic Preservation Board, because this is such a dramatic change, and it's changing the appearance of our city downtown. I think you need to 
vote against this or present a proposal to send it to the Historic Preservation Board. But doing what is proposed here just makes this look like one more downtown. Taking this away isn't adding anything. Leaving it there shows how long the city has been around. Let's keep it. Thank you, Ms. Finn. As far as the rear elevation, anything it means works to get you into the buildings along that street from the back would be a wonderful change. So let them change the back if they want, but let's keep the front. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anyone else from the public who wishes to speak? Seeing and hearing none, I will close that portion of the meeting. Uh, Mr. Eliopoulos or Mr. Cohen, any additional comments or rebuttal? Uh, just with regards to the public, um, we're not in the historic district. It is not a historic building. It actually doesn't meet the historic criteria, even if you go by the minimum standards of 50 years or more. So, I, you know, I respect historicness. Uh, I personally have saved over 13 homes, moving them and saving them in Delray. So I'm a firm believer in putting my money where my mouth is. But I'm sorry, you shouldn't be applying something that is not part of the code. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Alvarez, anything else? Uh, yeah, I just I wanted to provide one clarification, just that um, even, even if the arcade, I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to, how to properly <laughs> express this, um, but the removal of the arcade, of the arcade, sorry, um, is what is prompting Triggering. the waivers, mm -hmm. right? Um, but they can go ahead and do that, fine. Um, but even if they remove it and they're um, bringing in the windows, they would still need to go through this process. Um, the current arcade complies. Um, and just to note for clarification, I guess, as well, the arcade was added in 1974. Even if it's removed, um, and let's say it were designated, they could still make modifications, of course, just that they are in keeping with the historic character and architectural integrity of, of the building. So that it would not, historic designation of the, of the building would not um, you know, remove that ability. Thank you. Chair. <clears throat> Sorry, yes. William. Um, before you start discussion, if you don't mind, I'd like to give a little advice to the board as well because you've heard a lot of information from from both parties and the public. Mm -hmm. uh, Amy, if you could on your presentation go to the slide that shows the before and after of the windows with the red lines. Sure. So I'm, I'm really glad actually Amy uh, clarified that because it was going to be what I started with. This board is not deciding what happens to this arcade. It is not deciding whether the arcade will or will not be part of this project. Uh, their decision to remove the arcade triggers different standards, which is part of the reason why they're here. This request is solely to take one of those angled windows and flatten them to create a, a straight line face. And uh, technically there's the two circles or three circles you see that are decorative elements of some kind that, that will extend further into the right of way. So this board's recommendation is solely about really the flattening of the front of the building and technically those those posts um, so the arcade really doesn't have any discussion other than to inform you of part of the reason why this waiver request was triggered um, as Amy's also pointed out this is not a site plan um, so all of those architectural elevations materials um, those types of issues those will come back um, once they've completed the waiver process but again those aren't aren't really for discussion today either so we're looking at the four elements the four or four elements for the CBD waiver and the four elements for a waiver generally uh, applicable to all requests and only as they relate to the modifications you see on the screen now regarding the way the windows um, and those decorative elements that are going to enter the right of way as well so I just wanted to help the board maybe narrow the discussion or understand that some of these things aren't aren't part of this discussion and some of these things will be back before you and it's part of a site plan. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. 
And uh, Carol, would you like to start? Okay, I'll start. Uh, William, thanks for clarifying all that. Because um, it is a existing nonconformity, I guess. I, I believe that you, the setback would be 15 feet, but they don't have that, and they're filling in the blanks, and they would have just the what setback is that then? The what well, the, the minimum the minimum building setback is 10 feet. Maximum is 15 feet to keep it closer to the building. So they're at 10. Street. They're, they're at seven. Ten. They're nine. They're at them at most. They're at seven feet nine inches. And those That's are those. But the building already is at seven. The building is already there. Correct? Right. So the doorways, um, they look like they're staying in place, and so they're bringing forward these windows but then this is the more significant change where this whole area is getting filled in and it'll continue on this angle here um, so really the seven feet nine inches is this area okay so um, I do think that one thing affects another this is we're asking for a waiver here yet um, the proposal the, the architectural proposal and the elevations would be important to see to see if okay so you take down the arcade which is providing a uh, shelter and shade and and uh, a pedestrian experience and then they have the opportunity where they're building something new and they can provide a new canopy to do the same thing which I don't think has been done yet with um, elevations I saw because the Canopy was only five feet wide, and I think you're going to need more of a canopy to achieve that. But that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see them achieve the same thing that they're removing. Not maybe not the same thing, but I'd like you to. So, if the waiver was granted and they came forward with a flat facade, mostly flat facade, you know, at that point, the size of the canopy, its location, its functionality, those things would all be part of. The site plan mm -hmm. so I, th I do think you'd have the opportunity to review how that interaction plays with the site as a total once it comes back as a site plan and obviously that that analysis may change if the waivers not requested and and this has to remain at angles or there's other avenues you have to pursue so I, I think you'll be able to have that opportunity to review what your concerns are right now once it's an official site plan and comes through for that analysis right so i would like the applicant to know that is one of my concerns and i think that if you solve that issue if you give the pedestrian a better walking experience with a with an awning that's more substantial uh, i think that would be a welcome item uh, I don't see the arcade as architecturally significant. I don't think it. E I don't think it looks good, um, and so I don't really have any trouble with um, the removal of the arcade. But I do have a problem with. Um, you know, I think there should be something created. Um, and one other thing. Um, what was and just, that? just if I can. Um uh, remind you, the removal of the arcade is is okay to do. It's the modifications that are increasing the existing nonconformity and prompting the waiver. Yeah, I I mean the the building's already at that nonconformity. I I don't see that. I don't have a problem with that. Um, and I do want to also emphasize. Um, I think the canopies and I think the awnings, are, it's really important to design those with the building because all we see here is people have the, the buildings and they have, take, take for instance Lionfish, they have a beautiful building, it was very nicely done. And then uh, you know they needed an awning to come back because of their restaurant, because of the seating and they have this ginormous awning that doesn't look good, it doesn't fit in with the building and it's... Um, yeah, it actually takes away from the fa facade of the building, so I think it's important to design that with the building rather than come back again and ask for uh, you know an awning that doesn't that doesn't fit. I'm going to interrupt for just a second. It, you know, m members of the public and applicants that are here, if you could silence your devices, I we would appreciate that. Thank you. 
And All right, that's Carol, it. anything else? Nope. All right. Stephen. Oh. Mm. Well, uh, yeah, so all, is, all that's before us is the setback right now, correct? Recommendation of a waiver for the setback. Okay, we're not even so, voting on the setback right. itself for the. So on the left there, the current, the doors are 10 feet back, correct? On the, on the existing. Well, the one door, you see the, the one on the right hand side yeah. is further recessed. Ah. So that is the higher number that staff has highlighted. Ah, okay. The other two recesses, which are more trapezoidal, they. Um, that number is a seven foot, I believe, Amy, that you've referenced. Uh, seven feet. Nine inches. Nine inches. Okay. So, the, so the setback waiver that's before you are those gray areas shaded on the right-hand side. So where you see that the diagonals, it makes like a gray triangle in front of yeah. each door on the left and middle. Okay. And then the so, filled So the in doors are staying where they are, but the front of the building is... They are. Right is that that's not no. that's not what's shown. The last it. door is. Oh, okay. This one and this one is actually coming further into this the uh, the right away because of the, oh, the angle dedication. Of the but we'll get to that. Oh. <clears throat> so I'm trying to establish. On the left hand side, the the horizontal red lines. That's where the setback is going to be. Correct. Those, yeah, those, seven, nine. That's seven to nine. No, that the horizontal lines show the ten foot and the fifteen foot setbacks. The minimum ten foot setback, and then the minimum, the maximum fifteen foot setback. Okay. And that's again after the right of way dedication. So we had an even playing field. You're saying everything that's gray mm -hmm. current is is the proposed setback. Correct. Everything gray on the right. So you're losing basically the a little bit of that space that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in the other buildings, the one to the left, that that's further that back from the street, correct? The one in this drawing. The, the one on the, the left the side of the building. screen. No, the neighboring building. You can only see a little tiny bit of it. Right there. I think technically it is at least on this rendering, but I would. I would just advise the board to ignore that because it's not it's it's a different site and it's not part of this application. Yeah, but it, it's sort of the way that the street the sidewalk goes. So that that's what I'm that's why I'm asking. I mean yes, this pedestrian flow there when they hit that the point, pedestrian flow be a that, projection that's from, from the building that's under discussion. Yeah. Yes. But on the opposite uh, side that yeah, actually okay. is so expanding you, the width. Exactly. So um yeah, so that Building is definitely set back. They're, they both are, both sides. You can see it. Maybe the awning just makes it look that. Uh, just, just the one on the uh, yeah, okay. west side. And and yeah, you know it does get pretty crowded on the Ave, especially during season. Um, but there's other parts of the Ave that are, I, I don't think, are any better, honestly. So, but yeah, that, that's all. All those are the only questions I have. Bryce. Yeah, Amy, just to, just to be clear, if, if they um, remove the arcade, which is not before us really, this, the facade would still be non-conforming, right? Correct. They'd have, to get a, they'd have to get a waiver to leave it the way it is, correct? No, um, it would... They're not I, making changes to the non-conformity. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, they're not changing the non Well, they are changing the non-conformity on the old uh, Denkler building, right? Because that was conforming. Right? Or was it I not? I think it's just removal of the arcade. I just want to make sure I understand what you're, <laughs> what you're meaning there, Price. I'm just saying where the, the, the footprint now is nonconforming. Right? Correct. And you're saying that if they leave it that way, they can continue to be nonconforming, even if they put in new fenestration and new... If they leave it the way it on, is on the left, yes. Right. But I mean, is that leaving the entire facade the way it is or just yes. the footprint? They could redesign materials without changing the footprint and right. presumably 
stay within the current non-conforming and wouldn't trigger the waiver request. Right. Okay. It's the filling in of the recesses and that then could, the addition of the, the two pilasters. And uh, and Gary, you've, you've studied keeping the, um, uh, the the footprint as it is as it is today right as it is now um i mean i looked at it but i mean technically the way we're talking the only thing i'd be able to do is paint it like let's say give you an example of the one you guys are talking about on the vince canning side the so the far right, right. which is the east that's already in the public right of way it's already over the property line we were adding we are reducing i think i told you guys it was seven and a half we were pushing it to two, or I should say nine and a half, because we were adding two inches to get the actual decorative elements on it. So Amy is correct. I mean, I could keep the storefronts the way they are, and we can just paint stuff. But that's, I mean, you know. Or I guess you could say what one of your board members said, build a new arcade and things like that. But, you know, that's not here for today. But that's, right. that's I don't know what else I would do to the building to try to conform. Well, I, I, I looked at the, you know, to me, I think hands was a, was a destination, and people people would be willing to go through a dark a dark alley to get there because they knew what hands was. Everyone was um, uh, everyone knows what hands is, and it's a kind of a fun store to go into. Uh, but I can see uh, marketability as it as it is is it would be a problem with that with the arcade there. Um, and I'll just add to that. <laughs> it's canning ceased to exist because they stopped being a destination right. and right nothing and then else the art really the art there yeah and everyone else moved out um i've got i've got comments about the facade and the fenestration and all that stuff but that's not what we're here for um so i you know i don't i'm pretty much of a preservationist kind of guy you know and this is uh the five years that the um that the city's been studying Atlantic Avenue for a, a possible historic district. Um, things move slowly. If they, they'd done it five years ago, this would be a contributing building in an historic district, but it's not. And um, I, I don't think I can. Um, I think I'm in a position to vote against recommending uh, the waiver. So. Thank you, Price, John. And I think uh, I appreciate Mr. Bennett clearing things up. It seems like we, I don't know if it was extraneous information. It's information that kind of should inform our decision, but our decision is pretty uh, narrow. We're just basically whether they can bump out the beveled, and basically bring the storefront up where Vince Canning was, which obviously adds rentable square foot. So um, an economic benefit for the applicant but the main thing I think we're all thinking about is what's going to be next and we really don't have a way to know we really don't have a way to know that right now so um, we're here to vote on the one the one item um, all my notes kind of related to everything else so I'm not gonna go outside of the purvey of what we're here to, to, to basically decide upon um, it's really all I have to say yeah, echo what um what, what carol said I, I don't i don't like it when we're presented with with waivers before we're presented with uh you know the class two or the class three right. plan because right. under you know, understand but that it's is a, it's a it's a very pretty picture but you know we're, we're not sure what we're going to mm -hmm. get um and and i've said that before before other things but the uh the city chose to bring it to us this way staff chose to bring it to us so well, the LDRs uh, require waivers in the CBD to come before either SPRAB or HPB right. before it goes to the City Commission right and they can't bring it as a package it has to be brought first before that's right okay that yeah but see that's right. what I, that's what I don't like about it yeah. <laughs> I still don't like that uh, so anyway I just wanted to say that thanks and that uh, Sun Tzu says when two people walk away from a negotiation unhappy it's been a good negotiation uh, because nobody gets everything they want so I think the historical conversation is a non-factor for us uh, I think the property owner in his right has the right to move, remove the arcade uh, but in removing the arcade 
triggers a new set of guidelines. And in my case, uh, the waiver creating an additional non-conforming, because there's a non-conforming there now. And I'm just speaking this out loud to make sure I'm not thinking about it incorrectly. Mm -hmm. But they're further compounding the non-conforming by their desire. And so I couldn't support the waiver at this point. Okay. Anything else? I, I think I'm in support of the waiver. I think, you know, the the Vince Canning glass inside out glass cube feeling when you come off the street is a very old fashioned feeling. And I think bringing the storefront up to the the front of the building is is something that uh, I think is going to be consistent with what the rest of downtown looks like and feels like and, and is going to give a better pedestrian experience. So I'm I'm in favor of it. Can I just yeah, in one more thing? You know, we don't have any more buildable space. Everything that comes in front of us is going to be infill or renovation. And I think that's the reason why we have these waivers coming in front of us because even though we want we want the downtown to have character, we don't want a cookie cutter downtown. So, you know, while I do understand the visual appeal of someone being able to see, and someone could make the argument that the, the, um, the arcade can stay up and you do the signage on the outside of the arcade. I mean, you know, so, but at some point, we have to look at all of these waivers coming in. They're gonna come in full force because we don't have any more basically new construction space. So are we going to, waivers so that everything could look the same and completely lose the character of the downtown well I mean that's a it's a valid perspective but you have to remember the owner also has the right to tear down the building and build something brand new there that uh, would lose even more character of the downtown and potential of losing even more character of the downtown I, th I believe that the, the applicant is trying to do the right thing and do something that's both consistent with what we have and you know, something that's going to be attractive and modern and new and attract customers, which, you know, if we keep old looking stuff and nobody comes downtown anymore, we're back to where we were in the 80s and 90s. So, you know, yes, we want to preserve some historical elements, but we don't want to sit so far in the past that uh, we, we go back to, again, the 80s or 90s where you know, there was there was nothing here. I mean, I remember the first time I drove down Atlantic Avenue, I was drive, pulling a U-Haul trailer, and that was perfectly feasible because there was no other cars there. You know, and, and now I would not dare drive a U-Haul trailer down Atlantic Avenue, and I'm very thankful for that, so. It's not likely we're going back there either, <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, I, so, I don't know if we have any other discussion. Anyone else want to add anything in? I, I certainly would entertain a motion. Can I ask a question before yes. we get into the motion? Yes. Would it help the board at all um, if I put the criteria back up and and you looked at that as part of your decision? I know we don't you don't have to go through each one and, and vote on them. I don't think, but I don't know if that would help. Because remember, there, there we're not granting criteria. a waiver. We're we're, we're only granting. Uh, we're only giving a recommendation uh, to the commission whether or not we believe that a, a waiver should be granted. And just to be clear, even the recommendation though is based upon the criteria. Is it based on elements, the criteria? So. Uh, we could certainly look at the criteria again if the board members think it's helpful. I didn't see anything in my look through it the first time that I felt triggered anything that um, said we shouldn't be granting a waiver or that we should. So. And again, this is the criteria that is applicable to waivers citywide um, as part of the consideration. Well, I think for me, dips to special privilege because the additional. Um, the square footage issue. Right, and that's just my perspective. That's, that's so self-created. But, but is that something special to this applicant that we well, wouldn't grant to another applicant right. in a similar circumstance? I think we probably would. This is a little it's unique because of the way the building is currently footprint well, of the building. And they're just filling in the alcoves. Right. Um, that is an old idea anyway, and you really wouldn't see that. There's not too many people that would create a big 
uh, square yeah. so that you could walk around. I mean, they did that so that you could walk in, see their shoes, <laughs> and all the way around, which is what we did. But um, nowadays, you just come up right to the window, and you look in, and you see what's there. And there's lights that are on at night, and people drive by, and they see what's, see the goods um, and of what's there, too. But uh, And again, the criteria, it's like putting the um, you know, horse before the cart, because we don't have the building. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I'd like to make a um, motion. Is that Please. I'll move to recommend approval of the waiver request for 325 shops on Atlantic Avenue at 325 East Atlantic Avenue, 2022-131 to reduce the front setback, streetscape dimension, and storefront setback requirements from zero feet to approximately 11 feet, four inches, zero feet to approximately seven feet, nine inches, whereas a minimum of 15 feet are required by finding that the request meets the criteria set forth in the land development regulations. Thank you, Carol. And a second? I'll second. Thank you, John. Excuse me. Dana Post Adler is absent. She can't. Oh. <laughs> Dana Post Adler is absent. Price Patton? Yes. Carol Perez? Yes. Nick Wright? No. Stephen Cohen? Yes. John Brewer? Yes. Todd LaRue? Yes. Gentlemen, thank you for your time tonight, and uh, our recommendation will be made to the City Commission. Mr. Costello, were you sworn in? He was not. Okay. I believe you're, um, yeah. Rochelle, when you're ready, if anybody who wasn't sworn in plans to speak. This item or any other item? Are the authority vested in me as a notary of the state of Florida? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Good evening, board members. Julian Gudanik, senior planner. Um, I'm going to enter into the record file number 2022-074. It's uh, agenda item 8F. Um, before I give my presentation, I'll turn it over to the applicant to allow them to, to go ahead. Right. Board members, any ex parte communication on this item? I spoke to Jeff Costello on the phone about the project briefly. I spoke briefly with Jeff, too. As I did, did as I. well. And also, I have an office right near Mr. Cavelli, and we just spoke about the idea of it being a very long night tonight. So that was <laughs> between all the items we saw, we were like, it was going to be a long night. So that's all we discussed. <laughs> I got a call, uh, but I wasn't able to discuss the project. And I did get a call from Mr. Costello as well and had a very similar discussion about the length of the night and not much about the project itself. So. All right, uh, Mr. All Costello, right. name right. and address, and then the floor is yours. All right, uh, Jeff Costello, JC Planning Solutions, 981 Delray Lakes Drive, Delray Beach, here representing Ocean Parker Delray regarding the project at 314 Northeast 3rd Avenue. Uh, with me tonight, Jay Gillespie of Affinity Architecture, if uh, there's any questions regarding uh, the architecture of the particular building. This property is located on the west side of 3rd Avenue, just north of 3rd Street, uh, in the Pineapple Grove Arts District area of the CBD, zone CBD RC, Central Business District, Railroad Corridor. Um, this area is going through some significant changes recently. Um, as far as the property is concerned, this is a, a couple of photos at a front elevation. Um, and as well as the rear. This is about a 2,000 square foot warehouse slash art studio with uh, about a 760 square foot apartment on the second floor. Um, across the street, there's uh, some new development underway uh, and also some recent improvements along Third Avenue. Uh, pretty extensive, really uh, uh, enhancing that streetscape. Uh, to the rear, of course, is the alley. 
service alley uh, with overhead lines uh, to the rear of this property along the east side of the alley. Uh, the the pro proposal is to basically change the use for the uh, warehouse to office. Uh, includes a, a 513 uh, square foot office addition, a cover loggia, a, a renovations to the apartment, uh, changing the one and two car garage, uh, one car garage to a two car garage, and then extensive improvements into the rear. There is an existing, existing actually concrete area to the rear. However, we're improving that and installing uh, uh, drainage. Uh, it's have to install a handicap accessible space, improving the driveway to the garage, and also we're proposing two golf cart spaces, uh, given the, the need, another mo mobility aspect to the downtown area, uh, given the limited space. Um, before, uh, up on the screen is the site plan as well as the landscape plan. This project does include um, a waiver to the perimeter landscape strip, specifically along the south side, adjacent to the handicap space, from five feet to uh, two and a half feet. Uh, these are the elevations uh, for your consideration of the mess, uh, masonry modern architectural style, which is one of the uh, architectural styles allowed in the in the CBD. And uh, these are just some perspectives of. Uh, of the improvements that will be made. It does include a courtyard area with a seating area, again, the loggia, basically for the service of the clients as well as the, the staff. Um, and then you can see the improvements to the rear of the property as well as the front. It does include right-of-way dedication, five feet along Third Avenue, as well as two feet along the alley, and installing street trees along, the, uh, along um, Third Avenue. Uh, there is, a, uh, unfortunately, our, our landscape architect could not be here, but I, I do have a narrative if you want me to go through that as far as the landscape material, if, if necessary. Uh, required findings can be made with regard to LDR section 3.1.1 as far as consistency with the land use map, concurrency, consistency with the comp plan, as well as the standards for site plan actions, and compliance with the LDRs. Uh, uh, positive findings can be made with, re with regard to consistency with the LDRs, specifically those related to the Central Business District 4.4.13. Uh, with regard to landscaping, um, the, it does comply with code except for the, the need for the, the landscape waiver uh, on the south side of the handicapped space. It is noted, though, there is extensive landscaping that will be provided within the landscape buffers and there is limitations with regard to the, the size of trees anyway given the fact that there's overhead lines along the west side of this property um, positive findings can be made with regard to that waiver uh, you just went through this criteria in the previous item um, it won't affect the, the, the neighboring area it will not diminish public facilities it does not create an unsafe situation and it won't, uh, won't uh, provide a special privilege as a similar waiver has granted to the property abutting it to the north. And with regard to architectural elevations, the findings can be made with 4618 and the criteria for the board's action, which are up on the screen and have been provided in your staff report. Uh, this is, uh, again, retaining a conversion of an existing building. And, and, you know, it's not going over and above. It's basically one story except for the, the apartment to the rear. And, and will really add well to the streetscape. And based on that, we really we request your approval. And if there's any questions, we're here to uh, answer those. And thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Gadanik, when you're ready. And did I say that correctly? You did, yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, good evening again, board members. Julian Gadanik, senior planner. Uh, before you's agenda item 8F is a class three site plan modification for uh, 314 Northeast 3rd Avenue. Oops. Uh, the property is fairly small. It's just approximately 0.2 acres. The existing use is a warehouse that's been used as an art studio for a number of years. There's also a uh, existing residential unit on the second floor. 
the zoning district is the central business district, specifically the railroad corridor sub-district and the land uses commercial core. It's an overhead view of the subject property. Um, these are some adjacent properties for some context. Uh, east is facing across the street. North is to the um, interior of the property. You can see most of this street is occupied with um, sort of single story um, old industrial buildings that have been repurposed over the years largely into um, commercial uses, offices, things of that sort. And then there is a, a significant amount of redevelopment that's occurring on this uh, street, as you can see with that, the building that's directly adjacent to this, to the north. Uh, this is the subject property. It is currently an industrial warehouse that has been used as an art uh, studio. And then there's the uh, residential unit on the second floor with entrance from the rear. And the request before you today is a class three site plan modification um, that also includes a landscape waiver uh, it's to propose an addition um, to the building as well as a change of use to the existing warehouse to convert it to an office. And then there's some architectural changes as well to the elevations. So looking at the site plan, um, as mentioned, there's approximately 500 square foot addition. That's the medium gray color. It's the um, sort of bottom right of this screen. The light gray color is the existing warehouse that's being uh, converted into the office. And then the dark gray is the existing garage for the uh, residential use. And the units on the second floor, you can see there's a loggia that leads into the courtyard. Um, there's streetscape uh, improvements in the front. There's landscaping improvements all throughout the site. And then uh, changes to the parking area in the rear. Uh, looking at the floor plan, again, it is being converted to an office. That's the proposed use. And then on the second floor, you have the residential unit. Um, there's no expansion to the square footage at all, no uh, increase in density. They're just slightly modifying the, the floor plan um, configuration. Uh, so I want to touch quickly on the parking. Um, just uh, for clarity, this project does not generate any required parking because of the size of the lot and the fact that it doesn't extend above three stories um, per uh, the CBD section in the LDRs, no parking is required. Uh, the only uses that would require parking are restaurants and lounges. So if in the future they ever wanted to convert it to that, they would have to figure out their parking at that time. But as far as an office goes, uh, no parking is required. Uh, that being said, they're electing to uh, provide the single ADA space and surplus to requirement, as well as um, the two existing spaces that are currently in the garage. They're maintaining driveway access to that garage. and then. Uh, in addition to that, they're proposing um, alternative mode spaces in that sort of middle area between the ADA space and the driveway. Um, and also, while we're in this area of the site plan, I will touch on the waiver. So the waiver is specifically to that landscape strip that's required between off-street parking and the adjacent property. Um, because they are removing the existing con site conditions in the rear and proposing a new parking typology. They're essentially replacing it from a concrete slab that was an extension of the driveway to a one space parking lot. Um, even though it was existing non-conforming, they are technically required to comply with that, which necessitates the waiver. That red line shows approximately the five feet that they would be required. They're proposing right around three feet. Um, and just, it's important to consider when in, uh, analyzing the waiver, as Jeff Costello mentioned, they are still providing landscaping. It's not like it's going to be open. They're providing three trees with some ground coverage as well. Um, and then that's just an ex uh, existing condition for some context. So even though the waiver is required, they are, clearly are improving the existing nonconformity. Uh, with respect to the findings, um, these are the four you need to consider. Uh, it's, in detail on the staff report and then the applicant went over it as well so I don't know if I need to dwell on that uh, and with the landscape plan in general I just want to point out that they are not removing any um, canopy trees the only tree that they're proposing to remove is uh, one existing palm and all aspects of the landscape plan besides the waiver have been deemed compliant uh, through review by the plan, uh, senior landscape planner and uh, myself as well Regarding the streetscape, something unique is happening here that I want to point out. Uh, typically, projects would follow the layout of the image to the right, which is from the code where you would have the curb zone directly adjacent to the curb, letter A, and then the pedestrian clear zone, letter B, and then letter C, the remaining setback before the building. However, because of the streetscape improvements that have occurred on Third Avenue, 
it's not really possible to, to do that because of the location of the uh, sidewalk uh, with this new streetscape plan, which is unique to really anywhere else in the city. The sidewalk is right up on the curb. So essentially what they're doing is flipping A and B. So it would go curb B, A, C instead of curb A, B, C. Um, and the street trees they're proposing are located in um, their five foot right of way dedication that they're required to give to the city, um, which again is the curb zone, but it's just located um, up to the interior of the pedestrian clear zone. Again, just because that's where the sidewalk already exists. I do want to point out also that the project technically is not required to provide street trees because they didn't pass their thresholds that would generate um, the requirement, but um, the applicant working with us has agreed to provide them, um, which I want to you know thank them for you know taking our recommendation into consideration. Third Ave doesn't really have a lot of canopy coverage, so we thought it was important that they added them. So I just want to acknowledge them for doing that. Appreciate it. Uh, as far as the, the design goes, um, they're proposing a masonry modern architectural style, which is within the CBD design guidelines as an accepted style. This is a rendering perspective of the front, the rear, and then the interior courtyard. Uh, some present elements of Masonry Modern are uh, material va variation that uses stucco, uh, stone, and then wood to a lesser degree. Uh, there's articulation of the massing that emphasizes the solidity of the structure, which is important in Masonry Modern, but it doesn't feel heavy, so they kind of balance that well. Um, and there's also a prominent roof overhang that frames the front entrance and also helps separate the middle and top, which establishes the required tripartite composition, which sometimes might be difficult on a single story building uh, with a flat roof. So all those elements appear to be present. Uh, they're proposing a lobby entry frontage type, which meets the requirements of the, uh, that particular type per the CBD code. And there's substantial window openings, which provide a nice connection from the the interior to the streetscape and allows that visual sort of oversight. Um, lastly, with respect to the general required findings, it's 3.11, uh, the land use map. So they're proposing a change of use to office, which is permissible in both the CBD zoning district and the land use designation that currently is there. So it's consistent. Uh, it meets all applicable concurrency standards. Uh, applicant. Uh, application is in line with the intent and direction of the comprehensive plan in staff's opinion. I'll touch on that in the next slide a little bit more. And then uh, per the per, uh, staff report and this uh, presentation, staff has found it technically compliant with the LDRs as well, exception being that waiver that they're asking for. Uh, as far as consistency goes, there's a lot of policies in the comprehensive plan that speak to sort of adaptive reuse of existing structures, of redevelopment in the downtown that respects the historic scale, and you know encouraging that mixture of use to, to maintain office isn't really a use that's oversaturated, so it's nice to see that that's the use they're going for as opposed to other uses that are prevalent uh, throughout the city. Uh, there are a few technical notes attached to um, the the application that they'll need to address before certification. Uh, and these are your options moving forward. You can continue with direction. You can approve if you find it consistent with the comp plan and LDRs, or you can deny if you find it inconsistent. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak on this item? All right, seeing, hearing none, I will close that portion of the meeting. Um, Jeff, do you have any uh, rebuttal or additional testimony you want to give? All right, and from the city? Nope, we're good. Okay, to the board then, and John, would you like to start? Mm, yeah, I'll start, absolutely. No, I, I think this is a welcome addition. That, that area, since that arts warehouse, all that's been locked up and um, finally seems like this area is coming into some fruition here with the interesting project to the north and I know uh, Mr. Abrams also has a pro uh, uh, project across the street from there. I remember when we had that in front of us with the movie, the cinemascape going over there. I think this could really turn into a artsy um, uh, area. It already is, but even more so. Um, and Elliman has that kind of a reputation about them, so I think this is definitely going to improve the area. Although I do love driving by the sculptures and, and seeing great.
pieces of work that, that uh, Mr. Wyman or the Wyman puts out. Um, uh, I definitely think this will be an improvement. And uh, I'm curious, that banyan tree, is that staying in the back there or are they going to? The sea grape. Yes, that's that's The sea grape? Yes. And they're keeping it? Yes. Awesome. Um, but yeah, I think I think the courtyard's going to be great. I think it's going to be a great real estate office. I really do. So I think it definitely adds to that area with bedners and everything. And I think that's kind of one of the next frontiers of, of Delray Beach, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm all for it. Bryce? Go with your mouthful. I agree with everything Mr. Brewer said. I think it's a good project. I think it's a good place for it. Um, and it's it's been it's been a while. Um, I would love to see the Arts Warehouse District, you know, come to fruition like it, like it appeared it was going to do about four or five years ago. Yeah, I was so excited but, for that, and it just never um, seemed to take off. You know, we got Bedners, we got that. There's a, you know, we got third and third. There's some you know, it's, it's coming it. into uh, it's rounded into shape. I don't know when they're ever going to build that uh, movable parking garage. It's since like it's been sitting there for a while, but. Um, so anyway, no, I don't want to lengthen the evening. I support the project. All right, thank you, Stephen. Uh, yeah, I, I support the project. Um, third and third, great. I go there a lot. Um, building to the north, that that's also your building. Or no. Oh, okay. No, just uh, no. That's uh, that, that's, that's an office space. Abrams, uh, They're working on occupying the building right now. And then the garage seems to be finishing up across the street, the lift, the mechanical lifts. So that's good. I haven't good. seen anybody going by. I haven't seen anybody lift a lot. Uh, I'll be, <laughs> probably supply chain issues waiting building for us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's like everything else, right? Anything else, Stephen? Uh, no. Carol. I think the um, building looks, looks nice. Good job. The architecture. Um, so the waivers are just for the two uh, landscape islands on the west side. Right? Actually, just the one yeah. on the south side. Okay. So just for the one on the south side, the reason why it was determined they didn't need it for the north side is because the garage is already in existing condition. Mm -hmm. It's an existing um, part of the process, uh, property, and it, they need to be able to maintain reasonable access to that. Right. And they're they're reducing the degree of nonconformity there by mm -hmm. bringing it forward but with the south one there it's not a driveway to an existing garage they're essentially putting in a one space parking lot which is not currently there so that's that's why it's on one and not the other you did get um i mean the plant materials there you know what what should be there but i'm curious as to why um the parking space wasn't just moved a couple more feet well, the north because it looks like you had the room what we in, well because of the parking or no parking requirement and the limited space wanted to provide an alternative mode uh, for transportation other than the car and so as you see a lot in the downtown area there's a lot of golf carts uh, it could be a motorcycle or some other mode and so that was that was the reason and that's why on the planet indicates um, a two golf cart spaces there um, recognizing that and then I think if we were to do that then there would have been <laughs> the requirement to provide another landscape island where another tree would have been required and and again it is the right tree right place and, and we felt this would be more effective given the, the lack of parking in the area well the trees are there uh, yeah. okay Thank you. yep um, no, good job. I like the project. Um, I'm okay with the two foot waiver, the landscaping. Okay. I, I like the project. I think it's a good one. I'm glad that you listened to staff and added a little uh, coverage in the front with uh, a couple. Their yeah. yeah. And uh, that nice addition to at uh, the Third Avenue streetscape there. I think it's going to look good. So. Uh, anyone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. I'd like to move approval of the Class 3 2022-074 Site Plan Modification Landscape Plan Architectural Elevations and waiver for the change of use modifications in an addition to the subject property located at 314 Northeast 3rd Avenue by finding that the request is consistent 
with the comprehensive plan and meets the criteria set forth in the land development regulations and the technical notes will be part of the record, right? Second. Thank you, Annette. David Post Adler is absent. Grace Patton? Yes. Carl Perez? Yes. Annette Gray? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. John Brewer? Yes. Todd LaRue? Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, board. Thank Thanks, you, Julian. Mr. Cavelli, you still awake in the back? Yes. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Poppy. All right, we're going to take a 30 second. Uh... Brought the big guns in. Good. It's good to be back. Thank you. Good to see you. Uh, let's see. Okay, your next item is uh, 2021-152. I enter the file into the record. It's uh, Parks at Del Rey. Uh, before Mr. Cavalli starts, I do want to point out an error that was in the staff report. It's on page six. Um, the required workforce housing is 76 units, and they are proposing 76, not 60, as noted in the staff report. Thank you, Scott. Mike Cavelli, Cavelli uh, Design. Before you, before you start, just let me check on ex parte communications. Oh, none. Yeah, I misspoke before. I saw both of them move. I thought they were both <laughs> together. So let me reiterate, Mr. Cavelli and I bumped into each other. We share office. We're in the same area. And same thing, I mentioned the fact that we would be going along tonight. Yeah, no, no, no ex parte. And none for me as well. And uh, let's just note that uh, Ms. Perez um, had stepped away for just a second, but she will be back and we will check on her ex parte communication. There she is. Concerns. There she is. Any ex parte communication, Carol? Um, no. <laughs> and she said no. I need to do it into the mic. All right, Mr. Cavelli. There you go. Uh, name, address, and the floor is yours. Okay. Mike Cavelli, Cavelli Design Associates, 1209 South Swinton Avenue. I have been sworn. Um, you've seen this project a number of times. Um, this is just more of site planning in, in this case that we're, we're actually um, re-site planning a portion of a plan that has already been approved. Um, I'll go through in detail uh, with, with uh, a series of slides that show you that. Um, this is a class four because it's really a modification and an addition to the existing plan. Um, the property is, the overall property is located south of Germantown Road, uh, west of Congress Avenue. It's the old Office Depot corporate headquarters. The areas in the red boxes are the areas we're going to be looking at as a portion of the overall plan. Um, there's been quite a number of approvals in December of 2018. The property was rezoned from uh, MROC to, to SAD. SAD required that a master plan be filed a, as well as an exhibit to the zoning. Um, and then in uh, January 2021, we did a modification to the master plan, which basically dealt with just changing some parceling around for phasing. And the current site plans that are coming through are in, in conformity with this plan in terms of phasing. Um, in, in October of 2019, the first site plan that came through was a site plan that was for all of the items in yellow which was basically the infrastructure plan that established all the buffers, all of the roadways, all the street trees, and, and the, the, the water sewer, all that. The purpose for us doing this was because we had trees all over the site, and this gave us the ability to root prune and to move all those trees 
and all those trees have been moved into the buffers now and site work has, has begun. Um, this is a, the, the first main development site plan that was approved um, in October of 2020 and the north part of this has 12 buildings have been permitted or about to be issued um, and that construction will start. Um, and, and just recently you did see a modification to the north buffer. If you recall, there were ficus trees that were in very bad shape that were being taken out and we had to regrade the, um, the berm and then we moved uh, some of the bigger oak trees that were on site into that berm area. Um, tonight, what you have before you is the area in yellow is the part of that, uh, a, that other approval that is not being modified. Um, there's 12 buildings in those. Those are in for permit. Site development is, is going on that, on that area. So the south part of that approved site plan, which would be in the upper left-hand corner of this slide, is being modified to this plan, and I'll give you some more detail. The clubhouse is being modified because we're adding a second clubhouse. And then the, the area in the lower left-hand corner um, is a new site that hasn't been site planned in the past. Um, so we're, we're, we're basically having um, 16 units that are townhouses. Those were previously approved, but we include them in this plan because it meets the phasing within the master plan. So we wanted to make sure that those were, were included. Um, there's um, 147 units in three five-story buildings, and there's 164 units in seven three-story buildings with, with a total of 327 units. And Scott, correct me if I'm right, I think there's 747 total units, right? Uh, in 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 the plan that with the approved plan and what we're proposing now um, so in, in terms of some of the detail the we'll, we'll first look at the area that's being recite planned that's the upper left hand corner um, the area on the left is the what was previously approved the area on the right is what we're proposing the two buildings at the top of the page are the townhouse units that are, have not changed and, and were previously approved. The building pads to the left, you can see, have not changed and the parking configuration pretty much has stayed the same. But the six buildings in the middle have been changed to three buildings. And in the, in the previous plan, you'll see there was a small like satellite swimming pool there with some, some open area between the buildings. Um, that pool now is going in to the east in a, in a full second pool and, um, and clubhouse. In, in terms of the plan that's before you today, you see the, let me see if I can do this, uh, right there, you see that kind of a sandy looking area. That is a child's play area. And then this green area is a, the two boxes are like just passive open space. And this area right there is a third dog park. There are already two approved in the previous plan. Um, so, so significant uh, Im improvement in terms of this redesign and also the oak hammock is remaining the same with the buffers that are running around the perimeter with the walkway. Um, that has not changed. The, the next element of this plan is the new piece that's in the lower uh, left-hand side. This, this is the, an, another access point off of Congress Avenue um, that comes up into the, the roundabout that you see. Um, and the, uh, the new rec center is this whole complex here with the, the yellowish building and the pool and the deck. It's a much improved uh, uh, recreation center over the little um, satellite pool that we had uh, in, the, in the previous plan. Um, this has a five-story building in the middle and uh, four three-story buildings around the perimeter. These two buildings actually have garages on the back side with tandem parking in front of those. The rest of them are the um, 
are, are not garages, they're just apartments, but the buildings are all basically the same footprint, and I'll go into some detail about the buildings. I know this plan is like a crazy nightmare, <laughs> complicated in terms of the architectural package. I'll explain it's much simpler than it looks. Um, the other thing, change to this is the original rec center, which is that one right there in, in the middle of that yellow area that the, the buildings are not being changed. Um, you can see the, the approved on the left and the proposed on the right. Essentially, we're just changing the footprint of the building, the deck and the pool, and has not changed a lot. And if you see this gray area that's kind of an L shape on the back of the building, that is an open air covered area that we think is a great addition for people to get out of the sun, but still enjoy the, the pool and, and all of the activities there. Um, there are seven three-story buildings in this, this plan. Um, and we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll go through the different, the different types with you. Um, a type one building, uh, and you can see the little key map on the side in terms of where these are located. Um, all of these buildings have different types. There's a type one, a type two, a two A, a three. It's very confusing when you look at the plans, but essentially the, the, the reason for the types is it's either a different unit mix or they have a garage. So in, in this particular case, um, you can see those four garage doors that are uh, on the side of the building. If the, this same building could have no garages and the windows to the left and the right of the entry areas would just be in the place of the garage doors. Um, and then there are three type two buildings. Again, the only real difference, the architecture is all similar. The only real difference is it's either, it, this is a longer building and it's a unit mix change. And, and you'll see, as I show you all these, they all, the architecture is all very similar. Difficult to tell what's going on with the architecture in terms of translating these flats. So we actually have provided you some 3D rendering so you can get a better look of, of what the building looks like. We think it's a very clean architecture, very attractive. Um, this is the two buildings that are on Congress Avenue. The main entry coming off of Congress to, is to the left of the picture. Um, Note that the sidewalk has been moved away from the curb um, and put back into the buffer. The buffer is 30 feet deep um, so that you get some, some of the complete streets uh, activity. Um, the landscaping that's, that's shown here is, is representative of what's on the landscape plan. And when I got this rendering, I said, where is the landscaping? that would go in this buffer in the front. And I realized that was a different set of plans under, on the um, infrastructure plans that we did not give to the renderer, so those didn't get in. But there are uh, more trees. Um, there's silver buttonwoods, and there's cocoa plum, hedge, and, and a lot of other plant material in that buffer. But this gives you, I think, a much better representation of what the architecture of the, of the project looks like. Um, again, an, another type three building, it's a unit mix change is, is basically what this is. It still has that same look of, the, of those buildings. And, and then a type two A, um, again, very similar elements within all of the buildings within the project. This is um, a, another look at one of the uh, of one of the buildings. This would be in the area you can see the play area over here. That's the in that northern area where the play equipment is, and then this would be the passive area in front, and then there would be the dog park would be over over here. Um, this gives you an idea of what is representative of what is on the landscape plan in terms of the vegetation that would go in, into this, this project. Um, the, um, then there are three five-story buildings. Again, very difficult to, to tell all of the movement in the elevation planes um, on this building. So here is uh, the, what the front of the building would look like. Um, and this would be the rear of the building. This would be one of the buildings that is adjacent to the property line, and you can see the, the walkway and pathway that's in the buffer. But again, 
Um, this doesn't have all of the landscaping that would go along this edge that was part of the buffer plans, that, that, but you can at least get an idea of the architecture of the building. Um, and then the, the two-story townhouses, those are untouched from the previous approval. Um, they're just uh, um, the, the front view, the back view, and again with the buffer and the, and the bikeway walkway that goes around the perimeter of the property. Um, and they, you know, as people start to change the way they live, they, they're wanting more and more things in apartments because some people are just saying they don't want the maintenance anymore and that's, it's a choice. They want garages. So we are, we have added garages, not the, not the most sexy thing you, you've seen, but, um, if you look at the landscape plan, you'll see that there's multi layers of landscaping all around these to, to actually, um, hide them, I guess is, is the best word to, to use for it. Um, and then the, um, the pool area is the next revision that we that we've, we've done. Um, this is a, just a list of all of the amenities. I, I won't go through all these, but there's a fitness center and, and yoga room, co-working space, conference rooms. There is a leasing center in both of the um, rec centers so that people can come here to go to either rec center and not have people driving all around trying to find the leasing center. It's, it's right as you come in either off of the South Congress Avenue or right off of the middle Congress Avenue entrance. Um, this is the, it's a two story building. Um, you can see the open air areas that on the, on the lower left. And again, on the, on the lower right, um, this would be what the front of the building would look like. And this would be a view of the rear of it with the pool and deck area. Um, and then the, the, the pool in the new area, um, as the focal point, you come in again, many amenities, people want a lot of amenities that are going into apartments now. Um, the, these would be the, ele the elevations of that building. And then here is, uh, what you would see as you come in off of Congress Avenue. And then here it is with the landscaping that, that would be a, a part of that building. And then around the backside with the pool deck and the rear of the building. Um, and, you know, we've, we've seen over and over tonight the findings. Uh, so I'm not going to go into the findings. They've been entered into the record. The, um, the staff report has detailed the findings very, very well. Um, we are in compliance with all of these items and we concur with the staff report and the technical notes. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Hmm? Welcome, Mr. Poppy. It's been a while since we've seen you. It has been, thank you. Can you see the cursor? Um, Mr. Cabelli, uh, it went over <laughs> very thoroughly, and uh, with, with this format we have now, it, it didn't leave me a lot to talk about, frankly. Um, but it is a Class 4 site plan modification, and uh, it's for 747 total dwelling units, including both the previously approved Class 5 and then the new area that's being added on to that previous approval. Property is located in the southwest corner of Old Germantown Road in Congress, South Congress Avenue. Uh, essentially, I, I, I included the outline of the entire SAD, but as Mr. Cavelli's graphic showed, it's basically the west half of the SAD, which was the uh, site of the previous Class 5, and then the addition of this area here, which was part of the phasing plan of the original SAD rezoning. So now, it, unfortunately, this is turned on its side because of the orientation of the, of the plan. But this is the west half 
do I have that same? No, I was, uh, do we have the same little uh, thing with highlighter thing? Yeah, I think the advanced button, you just oh, hold it down. Top button. Top button. Yeah. I just used the there we go. So th this is the original uh, site of the class five and they're adding on this area here to that class five. And it was, as part of the SAD, it was a residential phase. Uh, the landscape plan um, is, is there for you. Um, I had to put all of them in there. So they have landscaping, the foundation landscaping. They also have uh, street uh, scape landscaping uh, throughout the development as well as within the parking areas. And this is the, the this is the new area. It's, part, it's fronts on Congress Avenue. It has the uh, entrance feature, uh, vehicle entrance entrance feature on the south side that you enter into and exit out onto Congress Avenue. Foundation for the uh, clubhouse. Now the elevations. That uh, this is one of the things I did want to fill in a little bit. The uh, this eclectic architectural style is essentially what was what was approved as part of the class five. So what what they're doing is it melding the, the new areas into what was previously approved. So you don't have some sort of jarring architectural amalgam um, within the development. Uh, yeah. Mike went over the the history of the SAD. Uh, the parking area, the required parking is 1,299 spaces. They have uh, provided 1,310 spaces. That's both in surface parking area as well as the tandem space behind the garage and the garage itself, which are one car garages. Page six, here we go. I did mention uh, at the top that um, in the staff report, it calls out a, uh, a provision of 60, 60 workforce housing units. Actually, the requirement is 76, and as noted on the site plan, the site plan notes, they are providing 76 uh, workforce uh, units. My apologies on that. On the uh, land use uh, d um, requirements, I do, do want to draw your attention to policy NDC 1.3.4. It's on page eight. That is the, the regional activity uh, requirement, regional activity centers. This uh, property was designated as, uh, at that time, the one of the regional activity centers. And there are certain um, uh, nuances, if you will, that go along with that designation. Um, Interconnected block structure. I, let me get my green glasses on. I drive myself crazy doing this. Okay. Uh, interconnected block structure and network of multiple multimodal streets and paths maximize internal circulation and minimize impacts to the arterial roads. Um, as Mr. Cavelli indicated, they do have a. Uh, a I call it a spine road that goes throughout the, the project, Oops. Uh, which goes this one. There we go. It goes north and south, and then it goes east and west. That connects uh, basically all the phases to the, the exterior public roads, which are Congress and Old Germantown Road. Uh, so you have a, a very connected uh, system of roads, internal roads that get you out and into from the public streets. Comprehensive mix of uses include residential, office, commercial, and recreation that meets the daily needs of residents. They may also include education and civic uses. Uh, so far, the phases, including the one that's been added, were uh, identified as residential phases. The commercial or mixed use uh, portion is this here, which is south of the Arbors, uh, which the Arbors is also included in the SAD. 
uh, that area there is going to be was designated as a mixed use, including some residential and commercial offices, restaurant in that area. Uh, <clears throat> densities and intensities that support uh, nearby transit service. Uh, they do have, uh, again, that connection. They had the density and intensity for uh, to support that lo local uh, transit multimodal uses. And they do have um, a a bus stop located interior to the development. St oh, well, and this day, Uber and Lyft and all those, it, th that's where you come into the site or leave the site. Streets, paths, and public open spaces that are in interconnected, safe, and attractive. Uh, again, the those areas are located central. That is probably the main recreational facility, which includes a park, which was previously approved, by the way. They have the new uh, recreational facility in the new phase, and then they have some additional recreational facilities, uh, dog park and uh, um, children play area. Streets, paths, and public open spaces that are interconnected, safe, and attractive pretty well um, streetscaped interior to the site. Off-street parking areas located and designed to support walking, such as located to the rear or sides of buildings and limited in size, large fields of parking between buildings, building facades, <clears throat> and streets are not desirable. Uh, they don't have any one main parking area. It's broken up throughout the, uh, the, the phase the residential phase and efficient infrastructure <laughs> they are actually providing all their own infrastructure they'll have their own lift station um, and um, water service interior to the development and then exterior to the development the city will take over uh, those, those uh, facilities did provide uh, special courtesy notices to the adjacent uh, homeowners associations. And I'm wrapping up now. There's your optional board motions. That concludes my presentation. Sure. Thank you very much. Is there anyone from the publish, public that wishes to speak on this project? Yes, no. no just, if you would come up to the podium and. <clears throat> and name and address, of course, for Alice, the record. Alice Vince, 707 Place Devon. Um, can you go back to the, the map that you had up there? The aerial map? Well, what I'm looking at is you've said you had, had 747 units and you figure at least two cars per unit. And I'm just wondering if you have enough parking space for all the units, plus their visitors and company and children. And perhaps you could pull that up. Sure. Let me get in there, Alice. In the in the staff report, there's also uh, evaluation of the parking and yeah, well, the fact that they are providing more parking than is required. They are. Yes. They've, they've covered it. Yep. Now, what is that patch down on the corner? That's gray. Oops. <laughs> Which corner? See down there in the very... This area? Yes. That's the Arbors. And the Arbors is... An office the building. Existing project. It just seems like a lot it's of right. space being taken up. But that's been the intent of the project all along, Ms. Finst, I believe. Um, you know, we've, we've seen several iterations of this 
from the master plan on, um, that is the intent of the project, is to fill in the space where the office depot headquarters used to be with this mix of residential and then the commercial that'll fill in right now where those, um, there's a bunch of text, but that'll become the commercial area, so. Okay, um, and the main street that this is along is what? Congress in Germantown. Okay, are they going to have major landscaping along Congress in Germantown? Yes, they have um, substantial landscaping along those and a, a, a sort of wavy bike path that weaves through the landscaping, pedestrian and bike path. So you think they've got it all covered? And that, that was previously approved that uh, along Germantown, so that's, that's not under consideration for tonight. But yes, I do right. believe it is covered. And adequate um, watering for the landscape? Thank you, Ms. Vince. I appreciate the, the thoughtful comments. Anyone else from the public? Seeing nobody else from the public here, we will close that. Uh, Mr. Cavelli, any uh, additional testimony, rebuttal? I have none. Mr. Poppy? Um, yeah, just a couple things that I wanted to point out. One is that uh, from the Class 5, the, um, the design um, the enter, entrance and exit, exit to Germantown Road. When you exit, you can only turn right. right. So that if you recall, not everybody was here, I don't believe at that time. Uh, so you can only exit right, so you go, it forces you to go to Congress rather than into that residential neighborhood to the west. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing I wanted to point out was there's two notes attached to the, uh, the staff report. One is the, the, you have to enter into a workforce housing covenant. And then the second was um, the uh, Palm Beach County Traffic Division identified several off-site um, street improvements that need done, such as the improving the uh, turn signal or traffic light at Germantown and in, uh, in Congress, as well as a uh, turn lane. I forget what the other ones were. That is also attached as a note that they have to do. Okay. That's it. All right, board. Annette. Uh, Scott, I mentioned a lot. It's a big project. It's very comprehensive. I did not hear a mention of electric char car charging station. Ready? Uh, I believe in the... Uh, uh, that was a conversation I had when we did the um, the project that we're now partially modifying, and I believe that there were some stations, and then there was also uh, some pedestrian walk areas, if I recall correctly. I, I you know, I, I'm not sure. My my recollection was I thought you had uh, my some on the, the the west side. I don't recall reviewing for or seeing in the new phase they had some in the in the the class five area right. but great question well they in and i guess a little bit with with parking like the townhouses that run all the way along this west edge um are really self-parked um they have garages and there are three spaces per unit so obviously those are kind of functioning like a like a single family house it's just attached um so they would we we really wouldn't provide charging stations for 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 those units so it would just be whatever's within the apartments um and i actually don't know that we addressed a, it in this phase it's a mixed use project though isn't it yeah. Well, this is the apartment part of it. Right, I understand. Um, we're we're working on th this parcel and this parcel right now. We are very close to having those commercial site plans completed, so those will actually be coming in, and you'll see those those soon. And then the piece on the corner is an existing office building, seventy thousand square foot office building. So you'll have a mix of office retail restaurants and residential when it's all done yeah I'm, a, I'm aware of the mix um that's part of the reason why i'm asking about the charging station mm -hmm. um, because if it was all residential and you had townhouse parked and you had the bus station for the rentals and ubers were going in and such 
Um, but I think it would be a great opportunity because it is also commercial with office to address the charging station on site. We certainly can do that. Yeah. What about within uh, some of the garages? Is that'll be a capability within the garages? If someone has a garage, can they have charging access there? Um, yeah, they certainly they can. Um, it's, you know, the, the garages are gonna be a, a separate rental. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, if you had an electric car, you probably would want to rent a garage that, that has a connection. So we certainly can make those provisions. That's my only comment, Todd. Thank All you. All right, thank you. Carol? Okay. okay. So I think the um, dog park and the pool areas are a nice improvement. I mean, that really opened, got a lot of green space in there. Yeah. And uh, that was very nicely done. Uh, where are the garages going? Because I can't open up the... I could show you. I can't open up the plans on this uh, iPad. I keep getting a uh, error. Okay, I can show you. Um, there, oh, I pushed the wrong button, sorry. Let me go back. Maybe on the landscape plans? Um, no, I can, God, where did I? Actually, you know what, let me let me do this. I can, bear with me for a second. Uh, yeah, here. There is a garage, right? So you see where the dog park is? You can kind of see the cursor in the middle. That mm -hmm. would be a garage right there. And then, and then there's like three levels of landscaping behind it where the dog park is. And there's another garage right there. Mm -hmm. Again, there's multi-levels of landscaping if you look at the landscape. There's a garage here and here back to back. And there's one more right there. Okay, does the last one have a uh, landscape behind it? Yeah, I believe so, yes. Okay, I find uh, the architecture very confusing and uh, all the different styles. I, is there a rhyme or reason as to where the different styles are placed or how? I'm, they're it's, basically all the same style. The only difference is, is the building is longer or shorter I mean and even the clubhouse like the clubhouse looks so different from the plain architecture that the apartments are can you go through that I, and yeah. I have another question yeah. too about um, this is the two-story one that's in the middle of the this was the plan that was previously approved um, that we're modifying the, the building on. This is what type of building? Mm -hmm. This is the rec building. Okay, that's the rec building. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and then go here. There. That's. Yeah. Those are different. Those. That's the townhouse buildings on, along the west property line. Yeah, that looks. And that looks very different, like the garages and all that stuff. I mean, it's. And then. Uh, this is the, these are the five story buildings. And okay, on this one, can you go back to that one? Yeah. Okay. So this entry, that entry feature there that was over the door, I'm gonna go back again. Or, okay. There. What style is that? that? That little entry feature. Um, it's on every building. It was just a, it was, uh, speaking oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, they're on every building. Um, it was just a, something to give definition to the entry. So was that on the buildings that were approved before? Yes. And were they attached to the building in the exact same way? Yes. They, um, let me see. It looks like it was tacked on. Let so me see if I can I find, here. You can see here where uh, the the side of it goes and attaches to the to the building, so it creates like an archway, is to, to so that you're not looking directly at steps that are going up the building. 
it seems like there should be something over the top of it. Like it's, you just walk in and you're open to the sky again? Yes. It's, yeah. it's just the feature to break the facade of the building up. I don't understand that at all. Um, but I think the, the landscape looks real nice. And I, I think that's good. I think the architecture is very strange. Um, <laughs> That's it. Thanks. Thank you, Carol. Stephen? Well, yeah, maybe a trellising plant on that archway might help it a little bit. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so, there's no height restriction in Delray? I thought there was a. What's the rule on that? If I may? Yes, please. In the, in the SAD, um, this was originally zoned as MROC, which was um, a, a, its own special land use. And MROC has, in this area, a height restriction of 85 feet. When the, when the SAD was done, the 85 feet carried over. So we, we could go eight stories. We've gone five. I don't see too many buildings that size in Delray. Um, it's it's on Congress in a you know sort of mixed district. It's its own special. This SAD is Special Activities special, District, uh, so it's given been given its own district, which was approved by this board and the right. City Commission. When when MROC was was done, um, and I actually worked as a consultant with the city and helped write it. Um, the the goal was was to take uh, get some relief from the downtown and push density out to the congress avenue corridor because at the time the congress avenue corridor really didn't have a whole lot going on so they were trying to do things that would activate congress avenue and obviously there's a few things that have happened out there but it hasn't taken off the way the way they wanted to um but part of that was was to try to move density out of downtown and move it out to the to the west yeah this is a big project um, critical to the success of that is the commercial portions of this project yes and what's the phasing for that will that come to this board some point in the next what nine months year it, it'll be we hope within the next six months okay yeah for the remainder of the the land to be developed so can you go back to the uh, landscape plan, the, the top view, uh, what do you call that? The, the like plan lines of drawings, yeah, the site plan. Let me see, oops, I'm going the wrong way, sorry. I was just curious about the flow. You're talking this plan? Yeah, so, uh, so, you, so you got that road in the middle going going straight down the middle uh, off of Congress, right? <coughs> so I'm just curious, how do the people way back in the townhouses, how do you have, they have to you, you have, roll through all those parking lots to get you, to their town? Uh, you have this road here, and if, if you look with uh, the, the blow up, you'll see it's a streetscape that has parallel parking on each side, okay. like a true street. On this side, there is in front of the, the townhouses, there's another street that runs the entire length here. And, and you'll see that on the, on the apartment side, the east side of the road, there is parallel parking and landscape nodes. Okay. And then the driveways to the townhouses are there. And then this roadway, you can see with the, the paver pattern in the middle, yeah. functions as an east-west connector. Okay. And, and then you have the connection to, to Congress Avenue continuing on on the south. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't realize that was a roadway. Yes. And then, okay. and then this is another really main road that comes from the rec center. Both rec centers are linked directly to Congress Avenue. They have full median cuts on Congress Avenue, so that all the turning movements are there. And if you see, um, you can kind of see these two areas kind of where the, the it's kind of shaky where the cursor is yeah. those are two pull-off areas for like uber lyft and all those kinds of things that are incorporated in and we actually have a bus stop that we're putting out on congress avenue as well with a shelter and everything mm -hmm. 
So there's a lot of multimodal uh, ways of getting around in here. Um, and then the perimeter of the project has an eight foot uh, multi-use path that connects to the road right of way sidewalks and goes over a mile of sidewalks around the property. There's two entrances from Germantown. Yes, there is an entrance there and there. Okay. And then there's another entry that lines up with an entry across the street right here into the commercial, into the office site. In the, the Germantown, um, we had conditions of putting medians in that prohibit left turns out. So they have to go east of the light. Okay, yeah, I, I don't have any further questions. Bryce? Um, yeah, I think I've uh, been with this project ever since I got on the board. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I won't be seeing it through. Uh, the my question has always been, you know, uh, uh, traffic traffic situations, and I'm not a traffic engineer, but this new, this is the first time the city has looked at that, the city or the county has looked at that South Congress entrance? Uh, no. Okay. No, as a matter of fact, we are actually in at the county right now for the permits to do this entire length with all of the media improvements, everything. And right in this area, we're being held up because we have to dedicate a big drainage area mm. we're under the sidewalk uh, for exfiltration for, for drainage at that entrance. But other than that, the permits are ready to be issued, and we're going to put all these improvements in. And the county has no problems with I, – I, I, the ingress works for me at that South Congress one. The, the egress, what if you're going out turning north? Is that going to be allowed? Uh, yes. On both entrances on Congress, okay, well. and you also have the ability because of because of all these connections coming back to this spine road, you have the ability to go to Germantown and come out the light. Today. I was going to say, yeah, if that's if that's if you're yes. ingressing there, you probably yes. ultimately will egress somewhere else. Right. So, so we do have the, the, the luxury like a of a traffic light on Germantown. Okay, and then the um, uh, the low income low income housing you're going to negotiate discuss that with the city in there, but as a developer you can choose you don't have to put very low you can put moderate or medium income. The, in the SAD, there, that was all vetted in terms of the numbers of units and and I believe they're moderate income. They're all going to be moderate. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Okay, that was all part of the SAD approval. And you know, I, I agree that the I, the, the architecture doesn't um, you know doesn't blow me out of the water. But you know, if you get apartments up, people are going to come. <laughs> the way the rents are going these days. Um, so anyway, thank you, John. I was just thinking, um, lavers. I call it lavers. That that was one of my first jobs. Was back behind where. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Home Depot. That you. That's five stories, right? And it's yeah, not, I know it's more than three, so there was precedence. But um, my, yeah, my question is kind of traffic too. Um, my, have you, has there been a study internally? Seven hundred forty-seven units, rush hour, people all leaving for work around the same time, getting out. I mean, I, I understand Congress and Germantown. I'm seeing access one point here. I'm seeing you know you're saying they're not going to be able to make left turns there. They're going to have to go right. And then coming through the commercial, which could potentially be uh, crowded, has there been a study on that? Um, yes, they they did a full study on this um, when we did the SAD, and I think it was updated again. Right. Um, the other the other thing that that I could give you a sneak preview of is you know this was when this project was originally approved as a regional activity center. It was set up for like 400,000 square feet of office and 600, almost 600,000 square feet of retail and 2,000 units. So um, right now in the SAD, we reduced it to basically 1,000 units um, and, and it has 330,000 square feet of retail associated with it, 70,000 square feet of office. When we come in with the commercial site, we are not going to have 330,000 square feet of retail. 
And so we're going to reevaluate the traffic and go back and, to the county with the real numbers. Um, and it's possible that the letter that Scott is talking about with the offsite improvements, with the reduction in the commercial traffic, it's possible we won't have the impact even required to do those offsite improvements. So traffic has been vetted for way more than what 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 is being shown here. We've we reduced the the number of of trips through our design tremendously over what it's vested for. Awesome. Thank you. Um you know, I, I was part of that Congress Avenue task force that was created when we looked five, six years ago. Yep. I have to say that this project, I think, is exactly what they were talking about as far as pulling people off of, um, you know, the corridor, over, like getting people west of I-95, um, the mix of commercial and residential. If it looks like the renderings, I think, um, mm -hmm. uh, I think that it's going to be a great addition and potentially, I guess, hopefully set a precedent. Um, I appreciate all that. Thank you. I don't have much to add. I, I certainly appreciate Annette's comments about the need for some electrical charging stations. Uh, we certainly want to see some of those in the commercial area. Um, I don't know if you can wiggle a few into the, the new portion of the project. We, I, I think it probably was an oversight, more, more so because we, I believe we had them in the other part and it just yeah. kind of like, well, we already had them. So um, there's standards that say how many you need based on the percentage, right? Uh, it's, it's like best practice standards. Yeah. So, I mean, we can, if we can work with staff, we'll, we'll be happy to add some of those in. Yeah. And you still here? So that, that's acceptable if we say the staff's going to work with the applicant on uh, designated some electrical parking. Is that? I wouldn't even charging? address it as part of the motion. Okay. Um, you know, really the plans that are before you are before you, I sounds like this will be back yeah. obviously yeah. Um, so they can take those opportunities to to listen and, and make those modifications but the problem is you know that parking areas in this project are expansive yeah no so I where do they go how do they go how many should they go there's a lot of variables there uh, I think it'd be more appropriate for them to come back at some point and incorporate them for the board's review and then the other thing that I would just say, you know, in, in, in considering the connection to the commercial areas, make sure that there is um, plenty of pedestrian access so people can walk over from the buildings to get to the commercial, which I think we addressed in, in interior into the, the first part of the plan. Um, we had some discussion of that, and I think you've, you've kept that consistent with what we had discussed, which is make sure that those connections get made. If, if, if I may. Yeah. Um, right along this property line we've taken 30 feet out of the commercial site and we've actually created a pedestrian link with with and we've actually moved some of the big oak trees into this area already um, that has a link to the bus stop out on on congress and links into the shopping center very nice thank and we're going to leave openings in the building so that you can actually go through courtyards from that to get into the shopping center and that, I had and one more I question. Did you have more? Uh, yeah, I just thought about it. Um, in respect to the project, how far down the road is that tri rail station? It's more than the thousand feet that, yeah. that is the standard. Um, the, the part of part of why we wanted to do the pull off areas was because we figured as this develops. Hopefully the tri-rail bus will actually come gotcha. to, to here, yeah, and there's adequate area where they can actually come in, pull off, and turn around and go back out. So we, we kind of thought about that um, in terms of it's a great way for to get employees for the commercial mm -hmm. and for people actually to get to work. It's probably just, just over a mile, I would think. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Carol? Yeah, I was, uh, so the... Uh, they have to provide moderate housing yes is it on-site yes yes and what constitutes that that like what is moderate housing as opposed to low-income housing um, well it's it's all called workforce housing what's workforce housing and workforce housing has different categories that you just mentioned uh, two of them 
Um, the moderate is up to 120 percent of the meat of the adjusted yeah, it's, 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 meat. Ah. Yeah. So so Palm Beach. So. I think it's actually HUD that releases um, certain reports, and the reports are typically based upon um, a county. Sometimes if the county's large, it's regional within the county, but there's actually a chart that is created by the government outside the city that lists what the medium income is in the county um, per person, and then there's an adjusted um, income, and then it breaks down into the chart what 80% with a family of four would be, what 100% for a family of four would be, and what 120% for a family of four. And I think a family goes up to a lot of people on the chart. So when an applicant would apply to the workforce housing units, it gets reviewed, their income is reviewed to determine if a family of two qualifies for the moderate because a family of two's income for moderate may not be the same number as a family of four. So there's a there's a chart that, that spells it out specifically what it's considered. And in our code, the it states for what the different levels are, low, very low, moderate, how high um, an income level somebody can have on that chart, and then also um, what the maximum amount of rent they can charge is. And how many units of workforce housing do they have? 76. They're like units. And they're spread throughout or is mixed it? Mixed within the project. Yeah. They, yeah. they have to be spread out. Yes. Okay. They can't be grouped in one building or anything like that. And typically, and I assume it's the same for this SAD, they have to be spread across a different unit type. So they can't all be right. studios for right. moderate. So it would have to be a, a mix of studio one bedroom two bedroom whatever is available on the and one, one last point to put a finer point on it the, they have to have the same um, amenities so if you're providing uh, uh, marble countertops you know the uh, same units that are, are market rate right you have to have marble countertops in the workforce so. thanks all right anything else on, the, on those units, would they be designated, or would it just be like Floating if somebody by. moved out, they could move somebody else in, or, or are they designated beforehand? Uh, it, it, they're not designated in in a uh, an apartment setting um, because they, they they have to have flexibility to be able to move those units to different spots. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and frankly, we, we don't want to designate because um, no. then you're starting to stigmatize exactly. Yeah, and if they were left in bad condition and they don't refurbish them or whatever. You know. Right, right. Okay, great. That's right. Yeah, thank you. All right. Motion? Come on. Sure. I'll move approval of the request for Class 4 Site Plan 2021-152 SPF SPR CL4 for Parks of Delray by finding that the crest is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets criteria set forth in the land development regulations. Second. Second. <clears throat> Who got there first? Annette. I think Annette got there first by a fraction of a second. <laughs> Unintended. Dana Post Adler is absent. Price Patton? Yes. Carol Perez? Yes. Meg Gray? Yes. Stephen Cohen? Yes. John Brewer? Yes. Todd LaRue? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Cavalli. Thank you very much. You, you did an exceptional job of moving this meeting forward this <laughs> evening, I must Thank say. Thank you. I appreciate I it. to be here much later. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, Ms. Alvarez. I'll try not to make it too much longer. Um, just a few items, if I can get to it really quick. Of course, I can't see. It always gets us. All right. Um, all right. So next board meeting is August 24th, and then September 28th. Just keep them on your calendars. Um, board appointments are now scheduled for August 9th. So I don't know right off who is up for reappointment. 
Um, but you should know because you should have been contacted and you should be on the list. Um, this is our last meeting for our chair. No? Oh, that's right. I forgot. Wow. I ch- She's getting one more. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, right? It got switched? No, so, so <laughs> yes. I did this before that. Right. <laughs> yes. Um, in conjunction with the city attorney's office and the city manager's office, it was <clears> determined <throat> based upon the circumstances that uh, mm-hmm. Mr. LaRue did not have to resign his position on this seat. Um, and so he will be eligible to chair the next and final meeting. Okay, well, we will thank you again next month <laughs> for your four years of dedicated service to Sprout. Thank you. Um, but that's it. I just have um, the dates, and then once we do have our first meeting in September, we'll go over a few other things. We do already have a, um, I, I, you know, internally I've been telling the other planners we're at capacity for our next agenda, so. And to stay late. Uh, yeah, and I, it's a few more items than we had tonight, so, but we did good. <laughs> Thank you. So, Mr. that's Bennett? all I've got. Nothing for me. All right, board members, any additional comments? I have a comment. Um, so with staff, when we when you get all these uh, people coming in wanting to paint and all the gray on gray, um, could you recommend to them to come with another option? If you see that all their paint colors are gray, um, could you say, hey, um, maybe you should just have plan B in your back pocket? in case or or, you know because tell them the way things have been going here like we're tired of seeing gray buildings Mm -hmm. um certainly we can give them a heads up just of past um considerations and comments by the board right um and some planners who are familiar with um with the past comments have uh, either alerted the applicant well they have alerted the applicant and the applicant has either decided to continue on or or change it um but yeah yeah because there's accents i mean there's even blue grays i mean it's just like mm-hmm. it's just flat out gray if, even sure. if they did a tinge of something sure just yeah. a tinge we're not asking for mm-hmm. much yeah we can um we can identify that because as some of you may know when um with some prior board members uh there was maybe a uh, Right. Not a desire right. for red <laughs> for for a right. bit of time, so um, we you know we would give people a heads up at that time. But we can the certainly do that. Thank you for the tones, suggestion. Is right? What is the code? code yeah, I believe code? it's earth tones. Well, only like, for certain architectural that? styles. So oh, okay. That's, yeah. 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 Right. Color. Generally speaking, a color change is being reviewed that it's harmonious and consistent with the city as a whole and the surrounding areas would be generally as a broad stroke pun intended um that that would be what what your criteria would be and like i said we can give them a heads up the only requirements outside of historic districts regarding colors are in the cbd but yeah we can give them a heads up certainly thank you anyone else motion to adjourn please motion thank you thank you all Thank you. Thank you. I um, I start usually start on the police advisory board on August first, and I'm normally oh, you're not, not allowed. September one. To right. Yeah. So normally you're not allowed to serve on two boards at the same time, but both. Sitting.